You say, Andrew, that you don't even involve your wife in like, like what you say just goes and it's not even a discussion because you don't even want to, you don't care to deal with it. It's not what I say. Pretty much. No. I just say, if it is the case that I do do that, right, she doesn't have a say. So when I feel inclined to do so, if necessary, she doesn't have a say. It doesn't mean I don't involve her in any decision making. That would be absurd. Okay. <laughs> in fact, I need to consult with her on many, many, many different things because she runs the household. Okay. But who so cares? So then maybe I just saw like one yeah, clip so that... Ultimately, the position just is, if I decide not to involve her, that's really, that's my choice and not her choice. And if I decide that we need to do something within the household that she may disagree with, that's ultimately my choice. Doesn't mean I don't involve her in any decision making. Okay. Yeah. I have a question. Do you think every relationship should be like that, or is that just for you? <laughs> I think that um, if if more relationships were run as a uh, patriarchy where a woman submits a man's ahead of the household, that they would they would be a lot better for for both people involved. I think biblically speaking, what's going on in this country right now, part of the reason we're having so much fallout, even politically, is because there aren't enough male leaders and figureheads, and we need strong male leadership all around. So I don't disagree with your viewpoint. I think there's obviously exceptions, as you're kind of bringing up, like there should be female involvement in certain decisions, but I respect your view on that. Problem is, is that people always want to make arguments from outliers, the, the kind of like... Um, we're always looking at these small outliers and going, what about them? Well, we're not going to shape policy around outliers, right? We're not going to do that. We're not going to shape society around outliers. We're not going to do that. Uh, that would be really stupid. That would be the sacrifice of the whole for the few <laughs> rather than the few for the whole. So that would make, that would make no sense. Like, um, yeah, you can imagine that there's some people who possibly... Uh, you know, stop signs may affect negatively. I don't know. I'm sure that they're out there. I don't know how they're affected negatively by them, but I don't give a shit, right? Because we still need to have stop signs. So I just, I ultimately don't care. I'm not going to be like, oh, well, let's go ahead and redo everything when it comes yeah. to, uh, you know, you stopping at an intersection because, um, because that affects your mental health. Yeah. Or, like or I, some, some like, Shit, I agree right. with you. Like, um, I oh, think there is, bad. like, a biological aspect to, like, relationships and, like, gender roles and all that. But I think that, like, in a relationship, like, you should have the decision to, you know, kind of have the dynamic that you want. Like, if the woman wants to be the provider, I think that should be, like, an option, you know? But, like, in general, I do think that biology plays a part and that, in general, men are more inclined to be the providers. I, it, listen, I, I, I agree that if a woman wants to be a provider, she should be a provider. I would just advise any man who is with a woman like that to get away from her. That's all. <laughs> Like, I'm hey, not, if a man I'm is not gonna say, enough and he wants that, like, like I'm why not? Gonna not? Say, <laughs> I'm not going to say that they can't, right? That would be absurd. And maybe there's some guy out there who's like, oh, I just can't wait to simp for you, queen, or whatever. You know, whatever <laughs> it is, fine. Um, but my advice to men like would be to get away from that woman. It's probably going to end very badly. Probably. Not the best idea. <laughs> Okay. So. Was there? A, I, I kind of want to just get everybody's disagreements before we dive into any of the particulars. So, was there more? No, I think that's it. Okay. Disagreements. Oh, um, so I kind of like already kind of stated like my stance, but I do think that there is like a biological aspect to like gender norms and like, um, you know, like um, just gender roles in society in general. But I think that. Like, in my relationship, personally, like, I would like to be, like, a trad wife. <laughs> like, I want my husband to provide for me. But I understand that there are women who don't want that. And that's totally yeah, fine. Yeah, I've met, like, yeah. three. Yeah. But it seems like every time we reduce it, they would prefer to stay at home. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know. Like, I think that... Um, I just think it's important for people who don't want to follow that route to have the option to. Okay. Um, yeah, that's basically all. And I do think another thing that was uh, that I mentioned is that I do think that women have it a lot easier, like in the dating room. Um, but I think that a lot of that comes with a lot of scrutiny as well, like from you know, like patri patriarchal ideals from society. Okay. <laughs> okay.
Okay. Uh, and that's a dating topic you want to hit on. The women have it easier when it comes to dating. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have that in the notes. Um, any disagreements? Uh, not really, no. Okay. Any dating topics you want to hit on? Dating topics? Um, no, I guess anything I could add is that there should be stop signs as a compare. Well, Wait. metaphorically, there should be stop signs in certain areas on the road. But I completely agree. Like, if somebody wants to be a, a trad wife, uh, and it, it works out for the family, then that's cool. But it also, it also like, if, if somebody's going to be doing all of that work, like all the house cleaning and such, like, they need to be provided for. And I think that I... Let's in definitely so, get back to that. In, well, in okay. society now, it's, it's harder because, you know, things are so expensive for, like, every family unit to do that. Like, typically, women have to work, too, mm -hmm. in the family. And um, I just would hope in a perfect wor world... Um, nobody would be putting all of the responsibilities on one person in the uh, family. Maybe we can just jump in now. It, it seemed like, Andrew, you wanted to, uh, you had something on this? We can just jump in now? Yeah, well, I just I just want to make sure I get the position down. So if the, the woman's staying at home, she should be provided for, right? Yeah. Okay. What does that look like? Uh, it looks like taking care of the house, taking care of the meals. No, her being, being provided for. What does being, that look like? Oh, well, provided for yeah. financially, like what she, what well, she, I, well, women will kind of often tell me the there's like a trope, right? They go, well, if I'm staying at home, I'm cooking and cleaning and taking care of the kids basically. Right. And I drive them to school and when they have a toothache and when they're sick, I take care of them, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I get all that. What's the expectation for being provided for though? What does that look like? having everything you need and never yeah, like, what is that, stressing though? out about it everything yeah but what is that when you say need does that mean like a bowl of gruel a day because that sustains you like, no, living, what does it look like living happily like getting getting uh, being able to have all of the things that make somebody comfortable you know comfortable like, yeah yeah to live in comfort yeah okay so you think that if you're going to be a stay-at-home mom you should live in comfort you should have the things you need and some some of the things you want yeah this really well, doesn't tell me anything. So <laughs> you say you should have the things you need. Okay. Needs a very uh, subjective word, right? What do you need? You need to sleep. You need to drink water. You need to eat food. You need gas. Yeah. yeah you need stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. I get it. You need those things. But when it comes to comfort, luxuries, things like that, what are the expectations there? I have extra money, I guess. I mean, if somebody's not uh, to be working and they're, they don't have an income, so they're taking care of the house right okay but like some girls expect all the bills paid plus their nails done and their hair done and like their upkeep is that what yeah, you're what saying yeah what are your what are your expectations in other words for being provided for like, yeah, if you're staying at home if, if that's the agreement between the two well yeah. what are your what are your expectations well hang on before we get to me <laughs> can we finish on the inquiry here i'm just curious the statement is i stay at home and should be provided for i'm not disputing that I'm just trying to figure out what that means. What does it mean I'm being provided for? Does that mean my my food and board is taken care of and that's it? Or does that mean I get my hair and nails done X amount of weeks? I have my own account. He puts money in it. I get an allowance. Like, what does that mean? Yeah, like ha being able to have some extra spending money, I guess. Okay, those are your, your expectations? Yeah, being able to... Like when you're working, you can buy bigger things, you know, like a car, right? Mm -hmm. So it it's not a job to stay at should home. Should you buy you it's a car? It's a responsibility in a sense. Yeah, should you buy you a car? No. I mean, unless I, need it, unless I need it, oh, and he's okay. working and can afford it. But right. if I don't need it, then, or want it, I okay. guess. Would it also things differ from person, from couple to couple? Yeah, I'm because, just trying to figure out a standard because the standard here was if women stay home, she should be taking it. It's not just her, right? It's just a woman in general. Right, they stay. So I'm just trying to figure out what she thinks that means. Be, be provided for financially in needs and wants. And wants. Yeah. Well, also. Well, so, how, where do we draw the line on wants? I feel like. Well, sh uh, yeah. Sorry, I feel like a good comparison to make, and I hate to make this comparison, is like how you would like take care of your child, like kind of like buy them clothes, like buy them, you know, give them the funds to do that kind of stuff. And um, I feel like that's kind don't of treat like your woman like a child no i don't think you should treat her like a child i think no. that you should like when i when it comes to like 
doing the necessary funds for them. Mm-hmm. I think that's a similar kind of like. Yeah, but what is necessary? What does that mean? <laughs> Well, what do you think it means? Well, I'm at, I'm, I'm not making the claim. I don't know. Well, when you were so talking about... So, I'm not making the claim. So, the thing is... is necessary, uh, I guess, would mean, like, if you want to talk about needs, like sh- food, shelter, water, yeah, housing... Yeah, I, I get those. Yeah. I okay. grant all of those are needs. And then I think that if a woman isn't working and she can't provide for herself, then yeah. the man should probably take care of everything else. I mean, there's... there's all of her wants? Well, so hair and nails... Sometimes I guess what I'm getting at that. is, like, who makes... Who ultimately makes the decision on... Who provides what? I the see. Man is they working. make the decision together. Yeah. What if they? What if they can't agree? Then they shouldn't be together. Oh, I agree. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Therapy. Wow. Find someone you're Whoa, compatible you fixed, with. You fixed it. It's a simple fix. Awesome. What if we can't agree? Then get the fuck out of here. Great. That's <laughs> well, awesome. Well, no, but I think this should be discussed at the beginning of a relationship because people don't because people don't have things which come up in relationships they disagree about all the time, even after they've made an agreement. Sure, but you can mitigate the relationship. But you can right? mitigate the risks. How? By speaking about it ahead of time, that sure. doesn't mean that nothing will come up to change. Right. So since but, we know that, but then, so then how do we answer be, this easily? Well, here we're, count, I'm not, we're counting I'm not for a looking bunch of, for an easy answer, right? So then, are we discussing just the initial? We're like, discussing all of it. Who's going to be happy hang at on, the end of this? Hang on, let me answer to this. We're discussing all of it. So okay. let's start with this. This idea. Uh, you have children, right? Yes. Doesn't that change the dynamic in a relationship? Maybe for, I mean, to some extent. To, to everybody, it's going to change In regards the dynamic. to like finances? No, just in, in, in general, behavior. Yes, yes. Just in behavior, period. Yeah. It's going to change the dynamic, right? Mm-hmm. Now you two have to agree about another life too, not just your own. Yeah. Right? So what I'm talking about is a threshold breaker. Where do we get to the threshold breaker? Where do we get to the point where, like, kind of tying it back to what you said earlier, Andrew, I can't believe you fucking monster. That you don't let your wife have a say in anything. And it's like, well, okay, one, that would be absurd. But two, I'm giving you a great logical reason why right this second. What happens when we hit a threshold breaker? We can do one of two things. We can do what you do and destroy our entire family because you can't be together. That's not or, what I'm saying. Okay, that's dramatic. <laughs> perhaps, well, hang on, hang on. How is it dramatic? You said they shouldn't no, be but, together. But that's was, dramatic. Well, why does it have to be the, the man? basis of first meeting? Not right, so this, is, so this is the question, right? You say, why, should, why does yeah. it have to be the man? Well, the woman's staying at home. You're saying that you, women have wants that, that are not necessities. I want things that aren't necessities. So who makes a determination she gets what she wants? Her? If she's relying on the money from the man? I mean, that's actually fair. If it, that relationship has that dynamic, um, I guess that would be... But I, I like, again, going back to like what I was saying before, like I think like this is like a relationship like by relationship basis like it depends on the relationship like for you that might yeah we're work. entailing the relationship right now so which you is want the woman staying at home answer individually okay so yes like, so i agree in yeah, this situation so we're entailing, yeah we're entailing the relationship right this second we're saying in this relationship the woman's staying at home the man's providing not just for what her needs but for her wants as well so if he, he's providing for needs and wants plus like for instance she might have all sorts of frivolous shit he doesn't care about guarantee you in fact he does Right. Okay, you're going to spend money on that frivolous shit? Fine. Um, guarantee you that there's going to be plenty of things that a woman gets that he literally does not give a shit about. Right? That's not really even going to be up for debate. That's going to happen. So if that's the case, right, who's the threshold breaker? Who gets to be the ultimate symmetry breaker, the decision maker think, when well, the two you, people I think can't If agree? he makes the money. Yeah. I think from the onset it, of a relationship, well, you know. if a woman's looking for something that's a lavish lifestyle, then she should be targeting a man who's going to provide that lifestyle. And you can't expect that out of somebody who is not living that life. So, like, if you're a blue collar guy that might not be making as much as, you know, a Saudi prince, then if she wants a lavish lifestyle, then she should not be going for that blue collar guy. Yeah, well, I agree that that's true. I think that this is scalable. So He's saying, like, what if he, like, loses income or something, then... How do you adjust? He, the point he's trying to get to is that if he makes the money, ultimately he gets to decide but what like, it's spent on. Yeah. To Wait, summarize. Even- well, I mean, one, one, I would agree that, yes, that's true. Uh, but also further, I take it one step forward and say you actually, because there's only two, there's only two people who are in a relationship, right? Unless you're a fucking weirdo. But normally you have mommy and you have daddy absent blue haired coomer gremlin. So, um, <laughs> Ultimately, I would think since there's two, you guys are going to have a disagreement at some point. Somebody has to be the decider. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody has to be the one who breaks the symmetry, right? 
I don't see a way around that. I've never seen a way around it. What if you had like a random number generator? What's that? What if you had like a random number generator and you like flipped a coin? Yeah. Okay. So let's say you flip the (laughs) coin and you still disagree. Well, you have to go whatever the coin flips. You don't have to do shit, right? Well, I mean, if that's the agreement, well, you then do you have can't to really do definitively it. debate this. Yes, you can so definitively defense it. I'm sorry. Wait a second. People don't change their mind all the time, constantly, consistently. Well, if you're if you're agreeing to flip a coin and whichever mm-hmm. side it lands on, you go with that. Then, if you go back on that agreement, then that relationship. I isn't suppose. Work. I suppose that two people could agree to flip a coin and wherever it goes, it goes. But uh, I think that that would be a really bad way to. Yeah, I agree. It would one, be but two. <laughs> Um, I still think that that would create more problems than it would help. It would, but I also think, like, when you say that the man should make the decisions, like, how do you have conversations with your wife then? Do you, like, tell her what you're going to do, or do you ask her first? Like, Well, I think, like, any healthy relationship on planet Earth, we have discussions about what we want to do. Okay, so you take... Why we want to do those things. However, right, if there's any impasse, I'm just going to decide. And there's many times. Can you give me like an example of like a time where you had to put your foot down? Oh, yeah. It happens all the time, especially with raising kids. Okay. All the time. Nonstop, especially when it comes to discipline, things like that. Okay. That's fair. Okay. You want this to happen. I want that to happen. I don't fucking care. It's going to happen this way. Okay. I see. Very simple, (laughs) right? Very easy. So like that wasn't really an example though, was it? Yeah. That's a great example. Discipline. I don't want the, I don't want ex, uh, discipline to happen or I don't, I, I think maybe this is too harsh or even this is too light. We have a disagreement on that. It's a perfect example of where, okay, I'll just be the symmetry breaker. Okay. Ultimately I'm going to make the choice. And I think that that's actually necessary. Yeah. Honestly, I see, like I said, I don't think that it works in every relationship, but like for me personally, like I don't, <laughs> I don't like making decisions. So I like having that in my relationship. I think too. when there's like, a good balance of masculine and feminine energy if the man leads it allows women to sit in their feminine and that's what we're so desperately missing right now in this country like it's actually sad i mean i grew up with a single mother oh, no, for I the most part plenty of feminine and energy. i think no i think that for the most part from men <laughs> yes uh, I'm, I'm i'm agreeing if we had not from women but from men if we had more of strong relationships and nuclear family then women wouldn't be forced as much to work on their own as much as they are and they'd be able to rest more in their feminine so i think it's kind of a that's why I'm voting issue. for Kamala to try to get back to that strong. <laughs> you mean fraudulent? <laughs> what, fraudulent what do you mean? femininity? You don't, you don't, you don't like that I'm voting for Kamala. Hey, to each their own. I'm not the I one mean, making the vote. Are you actually? He's okay. I, I was like, he's okay, trolling. No. He's trolling. <laughs> All, right. All right. So, <laughs> clip it. I was like, maybe there's some sort of like. I don't know, like reverse psychology or something <laughs> in voting for her. No, no. She, well, she said that she, <laughs> I knew. she has, you know, she like works for a senior. Trump oh, advisor. yeah, yeah. So I thought that I thought that, that would just that makes sense, introduce yes. like pressure for no particularly good reason. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, so back to this. Yeah, I think so. I think it, this will always be the case. I think anytime you have two people or what you'd say, two consciousnesses, which come into contact, they necessarily try to dominate each other no matter what, no matter what. I don't care what the circumstance is. Um, there, something like that is occurring. So since I think something like that is always occurring, I don't think it's any different in a relationship. And one of the personalities is going to have to be dominant. So They're always going to have to be dominant. My question is like, so what about like in like a lesbian relationship? Like mm-hmm. who do you think there's like a like the butch who cares? They all or get whatever? divorced. Who cares? Well, I mean, like it's a it's it's a question. Like mm-hmm. they exist. Like, what do you think there? Also, just I have a fo- an additional question. Also, in dwarf dwarf relationships, mm-hmm. I'd like your comment on like that dynamic. I think too. that one should wear shoes that lift them an inch, and then mm. they got the advantage, right? <laughs> um, okay, so so back to this in lesbian relationship. I don't care. They're outliers. So I, I just literally. That's don't fair. I mean, like so in. Okay, so you do agree that there are straight, like, heterosexual relationships where the woman is making the decision and that mm-hmm. is healthy for that relationship? I don't think it's usually healthy. There could be... But there are? I'm going to concede that logically there, there's going to be some. Okay. There has to be some relationship somewhere where some fucking simp loser is letting his woman tell him what to do. <laughs> I don't think it's and that rare. And he's, and he's totally okay with it. Like, I agree. No, no, no. Not, it's not rare that they do it. It's rare that they're okay with it. That's what I think. 
I think that they would prefer yeah, okay. not to not to have that dynamic. <laughs> Understandable, even if yeah. They have it. So <laughs> I think a lot I of think those women, relationships they are not happy. Yeah, like the women aren't happy either. Yeah, so I okay, talk to a guy perfect, like that, and perfect. So awful. I mean, can I logically accept? that such relationships occur, of course, and that there's some asshole somewhere who just loves that <laughs> shit. Yes, there's guys who like getting their balls stomped on. I know because I've had women on here who tell me that they paid them to do it. So clearly there are insane lunatics all over the place who want crazy shit, but who cares? I'm not gonna advocate uh, towards any of that because that's definitely the exception of the norm. The exception of the regular. I think generally, right, if we, if we were to take the whole into consideration, the kind of best family dynamic is cross-generational nuclear. And since it's either cross-generational or nuclear, that um, because you need a mom and a dad at home, that you're going to have to defer to the man because generally his job is to protect the family. And he's the one who can do that, can, is capable of, and the woman usually is not. And so since that's the case, I think he gets to be the symmetry breaker. That seems completely reason-based to me. Um, are there any areas in your relationship where you do take your wife's advice? Because, for example, with my husband, take like, her advice all the time. Okay, I just wanted. I mean, there are. Some it goes areas. like as I'm like, honey, I'm about to troll these <laughs> stupid ass feminine. What do you think of this tweet? I have a question for you. <laughs> happens <laughs> happens every day. <laughs> um, what do you think like women's strengths are like compared to men? Their strengths. Yeah. Well, in which way? In every way, because I feel like a lot of the time. Like they can have we, kids. That's Are you not serious? Well, I was going to say also earlier. Yeah, I don't. Well, listen, I'm going to be totally honest with you. And we like, why are you and, with and your and wife, by the way, for example? We can debate this right now, and I'm going to enjoy it. So, uh, here's my position: women can have children, men can't. Women are literally better at men than at nothing. Better than men, literally at nothing on planet Earth. However men have women completely and totally beaten when it comes to force and the application of force. Did you know that Einstein stopped making discoveries when he left his lady? Do you know that Einstein was fucking, like, uh, he was he, he was fucking a cousin or some like a first cousin yeah, or probably. something like this. I'm not kidding. Wait, I yeah, stopped, yeah. stopped. No, but what was the claim? He yeah. stopped making discoveries when um, he left his girlfriend or wife or she left him. It's actually debated that we they were all hers, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, okay, yeah. but women are also more nurturing, and they're better yeah. cared to Wait, right. when did Einstein meet his wife? I don't know. No, no. Before see, his discoveries. I used it's to think all of that. this shit. I used to think just like you did, right? Well, they, surely women are more nurturing. And Nope, nope. The thing is, is that um, <clears throat> externally, the presentation that women are more nurturing Socially, this is much more acceptable that they present themselves as being more nurturing. That doesn't actually mean that they are. It just means that socially they present themselves as being so. I've never been convinced that women are more nurturing than men, uh, ever. I think that they perhaps do it in a different way than men do. But I don't Can think... Can men that, breastfeed? I do, I, well, I, how do you think men are nurturing? On, so I already conceded... Whoa. Right? So two things. One, yes, men can lactate, just so you know. But two... Right, you probably didn't know that, but yes, they they can. Uh, that's the grossest shit ever, but yes. But it has um, no sustenance. Two, yeah. two, um, to this point, I already conceded reproduction as being the only thing a woman uh, can do that a man can't. But you came from us, so how would how what does that have to do with anything? I came. I also came from the mm -hmm. reproductive ge genetic material of my father. Or did you think that women unilaterally got set or uh, got pregnant? Do you think that they unilaterally get pregnant? They're just on their own. They're asexual. Snap their fingers and become pregnant. Or does it require male genetic material? Well, why do you disagree that women are more inherently nurturing? Because when I look at the stats for abuse rates of children and things like this, I used to think all sorts of things. I used to think that uh, men were far more likely to essay than women. It's not true. I used to think that. Um, Wait, what? Okay, what exact stat is that? Yeah, uh, well, actually, I can pull them all up. Uh, I'd like to see it. But yeah, if, and if I, women and I'm, are and like, uh, Hang on, hang on, <laughs> one second. Okay, this is going to come as a shocking stunner to you, but I'll, I'll actually logically demonstrate it. And then what I'm going to do when I'm out having a smoke, I will literally text these to Brian. He can pull them all up on screen so that you can see all of the studies. I have them all prepared for this, just for this conversation, in case the day came where it came up. And today is that day. <laughs> Wait, now, but like what kind of essay I'm asking? Is it like in general or is it like a yes, specific it's, kind? It's even penetrative. Even penetrative essay. 
Yeah, isn't that amazing? So the thing is, is um, here's why. Here's why this occurs. It's because of reporting. So I did not know this, but there's a reclassification for uh, penetrative SA. So if men are not penetrated, it's not counted as SA. And that's insane. That's absolutely fucking insane. So it's just, they just completely don't count it. I couldn't believe it. So was, how did they gather the data then? By self-reporting, same way they do with women. And so when they did all these studies of self-reports in colleges all over the place, they found out that men were reporting that they were essayed by women far more than women were reporting they were essayed by men. What, it's just that, what was the it's study It's just that they by? didn't go and make, well, again, I'll pull them all up. <laughs> I don't remember all of the authors off the top of my head. Um, but yes, this was done and repeated multiple times. So no, I don't believe in this myth. I've never believed in the myth. And here, I can even logically show you. Do you agree with me that things that women consider to be essay are usually overlooked with men. An example yes. of this, if you're at a party and I walked over to, at my age, an 18 year old girl who was randomly on a couch and started rubbing her shoulders, you would be a fucking creep in essaying the girl, right? Yeah. Now take 40 year old hot mom, comes over to 18 year old boy on the couch, rubs his shoulders. Probably not a big deal. I think there's Hang on, a, hang on. Okay, go ahead. Can you can see that that's probably not a big deal? Yeah, I don't so think why it's is a big one essay deal. And one isn't no, it's because of how it's reported. No, necessarily. I don't think that this kind of thing is a big deal. I think it's a difference in like when a man essays a woman, like, and I'm not, and like this is like in a vacuum necessarily. So, like, usually when we're talking about essay, like a man essaying a woman is like a lot more serious, why? like. Well, I'm not talking about it's hard to it's hard to say that like not not a man saying a woman is not more serious what? but like yeah. <laughs> um so imagine if I was making this claim the other way. No, I'm not saying. Just, well, just envision well, if I was yeah. making the claim the yeah, other I way. I would say that's When a man essays a woman, that's not a big deal, right? Did no, you I'm, even I'm imagine that No, that I'm just happening? talking about like women fear. Do you fear women? Yes. Whoa, wait, wait. Can well, you just repeat? Hold on. Repeat your claim. No. You said it was, I, I don't want to misquote you, but you said something along the lines of, it's not as big of a deal? No, I, that's not what I meant. Okay, well, really. what did you say? Just repeat what you said. Okay, so can I rephrase it, though? Repeat what you said, then you can rephrase okay, it. Okay, so I said, it's when we're talking about essay, like, a lot of the time, it is not as, like, serious when we're talking about, like, you know, like, uh, when like women in general. do it. Yeah. Are you talking yeah. about the method uh, of abuse, like, physically? Well, not me yeah, method, yeah, that Wait, does has this to do apply with to it. other forms of uh, assault or violence? Because, well, it, so I whatever. mean, it, it kind of goes into it because, like, you can physically abuse. So any crime while you're that sexually. occurs to a woman is more serious. It's not it more occurs. serious, but it usually impacts more harm. Yeah. Okay. By so a man. Here, let me yeah. let me ask you this. So, mm. if a woman suffers a, if a woman is a victim of a crime, she is impacted more severely than men than a man usually yes because men are biologically stronger i see what you're saying okay oh, so, sorry, okay so if the chick is really buff <laughs> well yeah if well, if a girl is really buff then and she beats her boyfriend's ass then yeah that's that's an no, anomaly no, no. So like woman, i i would assure really you would agree. she gets Wait, beat up let me let me ask you this so that's going to be less impactful than if she was weak so if uh, a man gets shot in the head and a woman gets shot in the head is there a differential on the impact? No, because they're not using force. They're using a gun. That's but there is that a is differential if a woman gets punched in the force. face versus a man because uh, women have uh, less dense skulls. So right, but both both men and women have the same capacity. They just to, mad at us because we're better at the it. Same injury. <laughs> oh, okay. So do you think men are stronger than women? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So do you think men will hit harder than women? Yeah. Okay, so men will hit harder, will hit a woman harder than a woman will hit yeah, a man. Yeah, but so what? If I were to get into a fight with a really weak guy who started shit, nobody would think twice if I smacked yeah, him in the mouth. Yeah, but because that's an anomaly. Because his skull is less No, dense. it's Wait, not an anomaly. <laughs> Almost every time two men fight, one is significantly stronger than another. Yeah, it's a generalization. Women yeah, are a generalization in... of what is standard. And so this but idea that, be, oh, because women happen to be easily. weaker than yeah, men, they're, almost they're, all men are right weaker right than right other men. It's... But no. women do tend to get concussions more easily. So here, even if Austin, you're Austin, yeah. just right here, she's right here. 
if you're watching um, like MMA, for example, mm-hmm. the, if you watch the women's fights, even between women women on women, they um, f- finish much uh, quicker than they do with men because they they have uh, less dense skulls and so they are um, more susceptible to concussions earlier uh, on okay. as well. Okay, well, let us assume for a moment, let us assume that men were far more likely to get concussions than women, but were far stronger than women in every other regard, which they are right now. And if they hit them anywhere else, it did way more damage, okay? You, wouldn't you still make the recommendation that because there's a force differential that men didn't hit women, even if women hit men? Wouldn't you still make the same recommendation? Even if yes, men could get... Course. Yeah, of course. So the concussion thing doesn't matter. Ultimately, no, it doesn't matter. To clarify what if we're talking about the moral imperative, right? If a woman strikes a man then she, you know, she gets hit back. That's the way it works. That's what you get. You know what, you know what that does is it teaches women not to hit men. There's a really good Bill Burr bit on that, by the way. Yeah. I mean... I mean, I don't think anybody should be hitting anybody. I, that, just I think mean, that's that great. There's usually a difference, like... I don't think anybody should get cancer, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean... In but like, they're going to. And so the thing is, is like, since they're going to... I want to have some kind of reasonable policy and some type of reasonable social policy around how you deal with the fact that because it's going to happen. Women get really mad. They hit men for some reason, socially unacceptable for men to hit them back. And the think- answer to this is, well, it's because they're weaker. And it's like, okay, but every time a man gets in a fight with another, with another man, the other man is also weaker than him most of the time, right? Do One you of them think is weaker than that the other. there should be battered men shelters? Uh, well, what... What is a battered woman sheltered exactly? A woman who was in a domestic violence relationship, mm-hmm. and she's in a shelter for safety. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I th- I would give those to men for different things. For different why? Yeah, like false essay claims. Right? But why wouldn't you give it for physical abuse? He's too rich. He's too why rich. Wouldn't you they give should it for hide his identity. Abuse, <laughs> what? Why wouldn't you give it for physical abuse? Uh, well, I don't think it would be necessary to do. Why so. not? Because generally speaking, I don't think most men would need that for physical damage. Okay, so you think that m- women... Okay, so do you think that men are more physically abusive than women? No. So then why... So do you think battered women's shelter should be a thing? I, I mean, I'm, it's fine. You can have a battered women's shelter if you want, I guess, yeah. <laughs> but men do cause a lot more damage is what she's trying to say. So what? Yeah. Well, you can't get mad at men because they're better at it. No one's mad. I'm, I think she's no, just it's saying just, that women... Think about, like, sports. Like, you have different leagues for different, for different, like... Yeah, unless somebody puts on a wig. Well, I mean, you... I mean, it's a, like it's a comparison. Like, you have different leagues for different strengths. Mm-hmm. Just like how women and men have different strengths. Well, then I guess lightweights who take on heavyweights should have a no, battered men's shelter. she's saying that... <laughs> like, that what do you want me to say? W- when women are um, abused, uh, mm-hmm. physically abused, they are... Um, it's a lot more detrimental to their physical well-being and health. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I would say I would say that physically, right, they could take the short end of the stick because they're less strong, yes. But that does not mean it's more detrimental. That's where I would have... Well-being? Now, hang on. I just conceded that point. <laughs> Literally just conceded that point. Wait. I would say that it wouldn't... That doesn't mean that it's detrimental, though, over what's going on with the man. Wait, Andrew, if I may point out, I do believe this is shifting the goalpost here because I believe your <clears throat> original claim was even in the instance where let's assume that the damage caused by a woman onto a man and the damage caused by a man onto a woman, assuming the damage was totally equivalent, your position was still... Mm-mm. even with equivalent damage done no it wasn't that, that it's still worse for the woman no I misspoke that was your position I misspoke then so yeah, this but, whole argument but, but, I'm, over I'm willing, but I'm willing to just concede it because I don't think it has any merit right I'm gonna, that's not my position I'm going to assume this in fact let me just oh wait one, one second hang on yeah go ahead, go ahead. I'm going to assume this special. in fact that every single time there's a confrontation between a man and a woman which is physical that the man's going to overwhelmingly win and the woman's going to get her ass kicked yeah okay no matter what in every single circumstance so what you hit a man that's what happens what's the problem here weren't we talking about SA how did and what we were we talking about before that yeah but I'd like an answer to <laughs> I don't okay I'd like an answer I don't to the think that okay I'm just saying I think that, like, when there is a physical abuse situation, like, if a woman ends up, like, punching her boyfriend, he is not necessarily going to need to, like, go to the hospital because he doesn't. 
so it doesn't take a physical toll on him. Yeah, as much. it takes a physical toll. You're just saying it takes a lesser one. Yeah, it takes My a lesser one. My question to you is what is actually wrong with? What is actually immoral about? What is actually problematic if a woman strikes a man for him to strike her back? What? Um, honestly, I don't necessarily think there is right. something wrong there. Right. So then your whole point here I makes just, no sense because even if I concede the battered women shelters, yes, they, they're going to lose well, every single time they get into a fight with a man. You've just conceded that if they a strike a man, thing. if you're it's striking him acceptable. first, then it's different from him striking you first. Yeah, but you and I agree that nobody should be striking anybody. Yeah, exactly. But we understand that there are women who do strike men. And if they yeah. do that, you don't have anything morally to say about the man hitting her back. Nothing. So are you going to say that Cassie shouldn't have maybe pressed charges against Diddy? Or what? Are we all in agreement that what Diddy did to Cassie was wrong and that that is SA? I mean, that's abuse. Well, but well it's I don't also, know exactly what, what the, the details uh, here are. Like, well, because I feel like there's some kind of discrepancy here and it's not being accurately discussed that when a man hits a woman unprovoked without the woman hitting him, then that's wrong. Yeah, I mean, just but like you're saying, we, no one should be hitting each we other. Both I think agree. we probably all agree on that. Yeah, so, we both agree. I mean, he'd be able to do a lot more damage to Cassie than Cassie would have done to him. Yeah, but what, but, <laughs> so this is where the problem comes in though, right? It's like, so what? Yes, I get, I get it. The guy's going to do way more damage than the girl, right? But so what? The moral imperative seems like it's the same to me. It just seems like it's exactly the same thing. So it's like, I okay, you're not. So we were talking about women being nurturing. So it's like, well, yeah, it's immoral crazy. for you to hit I don't men. Think I can even keep up at this point. Right? Way. It's immoral for you to hit men. It's immoral for men to hit you. Great. That's what yeah. we've established. <laughs> uh, why don't you believe in like maternal instincts and women being more nurturing? Well, I think they have maternal instincts, but doesn't that w- coincide okay. with? Well, what nurturing? does nurturing mean here? Let's start with that. What does nurture mean? I think being a, a natural caretaker, <coughs> you know, being inclined to take care of children and you know those in. Yeah, need. no, I dispute. I dispute categorically when I look at data for single fathers and single mothers. The single fathers seem to be excellent caretakers. The children live in cleaner houses, have better outcomes, they go to prison less. They all sort. I mean, almost every outcome, every metric, they do better. Do you think that's because usually when the father gets the child, it's because the mother was like a really bad mom, and the I father mean, is like way better? No, I think that sometimes they just get them because the mom dies. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's, like, like, it's that's really, an outlier. Why? But let's. But we can make these comparisons like this, right? So you can follow widows. You could follow men whose wives have died, and then you could follow women whose husbands have died. Okay, what's and you can take have a look. Have you done this? Though? And you can no. There's been tons of studies okay. which have done this, and you can look at the comparisons, and you can see the outcomes for single fathers in single father homes are better. And here's why. Here's the number one reason why. It's because of men. It's because of women bringing strange men in. They're usually far more likely. If they're not related to the child to be abusive towards the child. Men who are raising children, they don't have that problem with women. But this isn't talking about men and women. This is talking about single mothers and single fathers. So then wouldn't that prove the point that men are more abusive? Not, And I don't care either way. But just because you said earlier that you don't believe no, that men are more abusive. No, it proves that men have, men have a force doctrine which can make a deterrence that women can't. Not that they're more abusive, but that they that women are far less likely to like, oh, I don't know, do something bad to a man's child because he can really significantly hurt her badly. <laughs> Right? But is there a study with like mothers and fathers together that shows because like this study mothers is only he is together, right about that the outcome what? of single dads. Well, yeah, yeah but better. this is showing single mothers and single fathers. There might be other like, um, you know, Metrics? yes, there are, there might be like other outside yes, factors. But my, affecting okay, that. but here's what my argument was. My argument was no, I'm not willing to concede that more nurturing. If our metric for more nurturing is I don't know, kid's healthy, kid is clean, kid feels loved, kid feels safe. I feel like that's all things we would agree nurturing is. Yeah, and but that then... Is, hang on, and if that is the case, and the metrics for all these children is way better under all of those criteria, then how can I make the claim that women are more nurturing? Because I think that those claims might kind of like... 
mix together with like your idea of what a man should be because that's like if a kid is fed that's like providing if a kid feels safe feels that's like providing. nurturing yeah well what the hell does nurturing mean nurturing to you? is like love women tend to put more what stress. loved like i can tell you, you think as a, a kid mom, feels loved when he's dirty no it's <laughs> like, not like no it's like words of affirmation I, like mm -hmm. think of love I think languages you're probably wrong there though I, like do the studies specifically say that the dads keep the kids more clean because if i am just guessing and i ha i do know that you're right about the stats on this but if I was to guess the variables involved here, like women do tend to put more pressure on, like we're more neurotic. So we're like, they have to be perfectly clean. They have to be this. And that makes us more stressed. And maybe we're like more bitchy and less caretaky. Um, but it also creates multitasking. So you get less of it done. Whereas men do, do singular tasks better. So the thing is, is I think that men, uh, yeah, I think that their basics would be like, okay, you're fed, you're clean, right? right? You went to school, you didn't fuck up. It was a good day. Right? I really think that it's probably not going to be too much more complex than that. And by the way, it probably doesn't need to be more but complex. But do you think that, that maybe like a woman's biological drive to be a caretaker and like, because we definitely have more anxiety when it comes to things like that? I, you may have more of a biological drive to be one, but what we're disputing but is whether or not you're better at it. Yeah. My dispute here, again, I'll give you my position again. There is not one thing a woman can do. That a man can't do equally as good, if not better, but there's multiple things that women cannot do that men can do much better. So if men could have children, would you date men? No. So why, yes. okay, so then why are you dating women if the only thing they can do better is have children? What did well, I give you, what, what did I give you here. the criteria here for? I'm asking you, like, you said that the only, okay, so why are you with your wife, for example? You mean the mother of my children? Yeah, why are you because with her? Because she's the mother of my children and I love her. Okay, why do you love her? But for all sorts of different reasons. Why? Give some examples. Uh, because she's super smart and she cares a lot about me and she thinks I'm wonderful and et cetera, et cetera, Okay, et cetera. there you go. There so, I go what? <laughs> what are you talking about? How does this demonstrate that women are better okay, at can, any of these tasks than men? I can give I you an example it. of women being more nurturing. Wait, are you saying because... Because she has all of those that I, I should feel like attracted to men no, if they have why, those? Okay, what are you, what okay are you because talking why about? wouldn't you be with a man who's better? Because I don't want to fuck men. But why don't you want Because to? they're fucking men. What do you why mean? Why not? Because not I'm not a homosexual. Yeah, you're not attracted to them. Exactly. So the only thing that you think women is better, women are better at, is having children. So uh -huh. you view... Your, oh, you no, view, I'm sorry. You're right. There's yes. two things. I guess women are also better at wanting or at men wanting to fuck them over other men. Okay, so you you view, win. So you view take your, the W. Okay, no, you view your wife as uh, inferior. Inferior in many tasks, yes. Inferior in everything but having kids. Yeah, she's so she's be, going to be better than me at having children. And that's it. But individually, that doesn't mean that individually, uh, women can't be that. better at some tasks than men. So, for instance. My wife's better at writing than I am, right? She has a book. I don't have a book. Uh, she's better at all sorts of things than I am. She's better at, at complex mathematics than me. She's better at music than I am, right? Sucks at all other, uh, all sorts of other things. This is the ultimate red herring you just gave, which is if your wife is better than you at some tasks, then this somehow equates, because at the individual level this is true, that you can demonstrate that there's tasks which women can generally do that men also cannot do just as well as them. You cannot do that. I think that it was men, it's fallacious well, argumentation. That's fair. I think that men are very good and very bad at things. I think they're the best and the worst at things, and women kind of like fall in the middle. So it's kind of hard to like make that. So distinction. then you agree with me that there's nothing you can think of at all which women are better at than men, but there's things you can think of that men are better um, at than women. I mean, I would have to honestly. <laughs> Is that what you just said? <laughs> well, honestly, like I would have to think about that because I think that there. Well, think about it. I'll give you time right now. So back to yeah. the nurturing point. Yeah. If you look at divorce stats when the other partner gets sick mm -hmm. the men leave their their sick wives at insane rates so I, with that i mean like you can't say that's more nurturing it needs not maybe not to a child but to their partner well, in so, that regard women are definitely well i'm not familiar with exactly what studies that you're looking at right um and this could have something to do with how long they've been there if there was because women could be more likely for instance to conceal sicknesses they could be more likely, for instance, to conceal certain things which have been going on, which led to certain sicknesses, so there's justification. I don't know, because I'm not familiar with the stats that you're citing. There could be all sorts of reasons for this, which have nothing to do with nurturing, but have to do with justification. Also, careers that lend look it up and then circle back nurturing. at some point. We should do that, and I'll take a look at the study, sure.
careers that lend themselves to nurturing and caretaking, like nursing and teaching, do have a much higher nope. rate of Hospital, female workers. They do. I agree. Hospitals are absolutely begging for male nurses. And they're begging like you can't believe for them because they want physically strong men mm -hmm. to be able to move patients. But why don't they choose to go into that if they're more nurturing? Because they can make a lot more money doing other things. Okay, so they're not passionate and they're not about very being interested nurturing. In, women are okay. So why don't women can it? make a lot of yeah, money women doing can other make things what? too? And they no, don't no, see, to. see, they don't is, have a propensity. Hang on, for... this is where we're going to have some disputes. No, they can't. They're not going to go do roofing. They're not going to go do trade no, but, work. Okay, they're not going to go be rocket ship engineers. Yeah, they're not, not going to do any of that shit. They're going to do the exact same shit that they've been doing for 2,000 years, which is nursing, teaching, and serving but your they beverages. They go to medical school. They, can they go, go to medical school to be nurses. Why don't they go to business school? Going down and huh? then. Why don't they go to business school Because they're not nursing? interested in having business schools. Okay, 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 but they do. But why, okay, I mean, but why are they more but, interested but they in... Okay, I'm asking really, they do. They're well, really not that interested Why are they more interested in nursing and teaching than in business and STEM? Because there's a there's an application of what can be done i think they also have a higher propensity for nurturing yeah. and caretaking no i think it's a limitation on what is possible what is possible for most women i don't think but most women, women are, hang on i'll answer to this to to i don't think most women can do roofing do you agree or no disagree? i don't think so okay you, you hang but on but that's you, a hang specific on, hang on. example i don't think most women can be indoor electricians i don't think most women can do that do you agree or disagree i agree i don't think most women can be plumbers but that's those are all labor jobs. Yeah, so is nursing. Nursing's a labor job. So no, but, but this is also the reason for the gender STEM. pay gap. What's and that? There are higher rates of uh, graduation rates in women, for women right now than that's there are always for men. been the case. Even even since literally the dawn of the nation, it's always been the case that women had higher graduation rates. Always been the case that they have higher graduation <laughs> rates. It's ne that's never not been the case but because what I'm saying is that because physical labor is available to men. <laughs> That's but what why. I'm saying is they can go into careers that um, yeah, will yeah. be more lucrative. They can, but they don't. They don't because want they to. Because they have a higher propensity for jobs that include nurturing Yeah, maybe they want to go into that because that's where they're wired to, but that still wouldn't demonstrate. Okay, so that's where they're on, wired to. But they still wouldn't demonstrate that they're more so X. So, so let us pretend for a second. Let us assume for a second that we knew immediately that both of us were wired for the same exact amount of empathy. We knew this, right? But you were limited in what the scope was of jobs that you could or couldn't have, and I wasn't. I wasn't. So out of all the ones that you had, you went, oh, well, you know what? I'm pretty high up in empathy, so I think I'll be a nurse because I would really like to do that. I may also have really liked to do that, but I had all of these other jobs available to me to go do those instead, so I went and picked one of those that I liked even more than nursing. So the thing is, it's like, it, even if that's true, in this comparison, it would not demonstrate at all that women are more nurturing because they choose the nursing. It wouldn't I see demonstrate what you're that. Saying. So you so you think that women have high nurturing compared to like intelligence, like their relative yeah. intelligence okay. from their rel from their okay, relative that's position. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah, I think so, but I don't think that their capacity for it is supersedes that of men. Okay. I've never thought this. I will agree to disagree. I've never then. thought, by the way, include <laughs> her at all, and are just kind of like, which I, I obviously I know that it wouldn't be ever, but I kind of got the impression that maybe it's the majority of the case that you like don't have the discussion, and I think it's fine to have the ultimate say, but respect your partner enough to talk about it. But you clarified all that earlier, so that's... well, well now now it's murky again, right? So, um, let's move back. I don't actually have an objection to a man being an authoritarian tyrant from your perspective in his relationship. It's uh, completely non-bothersome to me. I think it's fine. But you're a Christian. Yeah. Okay. Do you, do you realize Christianity is a patristic faith? I understand that it it's says that the husband also has faith. duties to his wife well, too. Yes, Like that's loving correct. his wife like Jesus loved the church. And mm -hmm. I don't think... Jesus like I screw you. I'm sorry, you did have... Jesus have to justify anything to the church? No, but he also he talked to his disciples. Sure. Did and he had... have to justify anything to him? No, but that's no. that goes back to the last <laughs> So who's the leader? We don't disagree there. Okay, so if you're the leader and you say, Well, you're leading me wrong, then who's the leader then? You if you're a Christian, the leader should be God. So if your husband is not leading in a biblical way, you don't you don't just submit to him and, and forego God. Right? Christ? Right. Ted. Reflection in a marriage of the head yes. is the husband. Right. So, but and the if body, he's not leading hang on, in and a the body, way. And the body is the woman, right? 
Sure, but if okay. he's not leading in a biblical That's way. That's not what Paul says. Paul doesn't say if they're not leading. What Paul says specifically is even if your husband's not leading in a biblical way, right, you should stay married to him anyway. Yeah, I don't know about all that. Well, that's what he says. But there's a lot of contradictions when it comes to this. And well, Paul, then how Paul, could you? Honestly, how are you going to tell people what they should do as Christians then if you do, if you believe Paul it's had contradictory? More contradictions toward all of the other disciples than any of them. So, but there's no contradictions. You don't think? No. Okay. We should take no, notes every, of all the things we're going to come back yeah, to. Yeah, every here, every every biblical contradiction can easily be reconciled, and most of it is because you don't have contextualization. You read the Bible like it's an IKEA manual; it's not, right? You have to. I take, don't read the Bible that way. Yeah, you, I mean, how else could you read it? You read it like it's the living word of everything. Of what does life. that mean? How? What, what? You're the interpreter, right? Yes. Okay, so how else would you read it other than an IKEA manual? Well, you have to read it with, like, historical context, who it's being spoken to. Okay. All of the things. Okay, so then you would agree that these contradictions that you state can be easily reconciled. I think usually I don't, I'm not a biblical scholar, so I can't pretend that I know all of them. But when it comes to Paul, yeah, Paul said stay married anyway, right? But here's why he said that. He said because... Uh, even if you're staying married to this person who's they fallen might, away, it's, the chances that they back. find their way back yes. uh, is much higher. So the, here's the thing, right? Here's but the, then, like, what if they don't? Here's the, here's the idea. The idea, and I'll just give you the logical exercise, and you can see if you can correct it or hand it back to me. Okay. The idea is this. There can only be a leader, one leader. You agree, right? I think... Um, if you're both leaders, then neither are leaders. <laughs> I think we can tag team on different topics but i'll I'll bite here yeah so okay if you're a four-star general you're not in charge of another four-star general but you're in charge of all three-star generals right okay you agree with that yeah okay so there's one leader and then here there's one one person who's following the leader correct you agree with that okay so anytime the follower of the leader says you aren't leading me right so no who's now in charge who's the leader now okay so but let's say in, in in one example Let's say the Christian husband suddenly becomes pagan and is like, we're not doing this anymore. What we're not Paul going say? to church. What did Paul say? Yeah. He said to stay he, married. But he this, might stay but married, this is, but that doesn't mean that you have to follow on. the leadership on in that regard. Though. I think that, and this is explained very well in orthodoxy, and the reason I bring up Paul is just because I think it's really funny to use that example against people who are naysayers, but um, it has to comport with reason. And so reason, your husband can't tell you to sin. He can't tell you to go do a gang bang. Exactly. He can't That's tell you to go blow. He can't tell you to go blow other men so for his own personal immunity. He can't tell you to do any of that stuff, okay? Right. Great. What about if he just says, ah, shut up. I'm not going to justify anything to you. What's the sin? <clears throat> oh, I'm not saying it's sinful. Well, then what's the problem? You just don't like it, right? <laughs> That's the problem. It's you not going to work like for it. me. Yeah, you, you don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, though, is like I said, honest and you can't point to anything he's doing wrong, right? It's just you don't like it. And so when people people say, "Well, that's not very Christian," when I point out, "Ah, it, I'm going to give it you the be. 2,000 years of history where it sure looked pretty Christian," um, I would just like to note, how is it not? I mean, I guess technically it could be, but I was speaking in the context of like your relationship dynamic and. Why, what what, what me, would my personal relationship I guess it dynamic matter have to do with much, anything? But that's where the initial thing came from because I heard you say that and I was like, oof, are you really like, you, are you really doing that? Yeah, sometimes I'm an absolute tyrant. I'm like, I believe it. I go, I don't f- care. Sometimes I, I don't care and that's fine. I don't have to care. So the thing is, is, but I'm going to take this a step further and say that men who are running their marriage, right, if, if they if they are like, look, I really don't want to consult you about, I don't know, almost anything. Uh, I I don't actually see a problem with that. Do you think that maybe that contributes to like divorce rates and the fact I, well, that well, first of all, I don't like even think it happens that much. Okay. Just so you know. Okay. In fact, I'd say if it happened more, it would decrease divorce rates probably. Well, if they were like, ah, uh, if they just came in and gave a patronizing pat, we're like, oh, honey, shut the. F- up it's under control right i think it would actually decrease divorces rather than coming in and well, being i can't like, argue that being like, being like oh oh i have so much anxiety from work right just saying Oof. i mean i don't fully disagree there actually see i think this brings up the cultural topic that's kind of rampant on tiktok right now and it's that women don't want to have to make decisions it's the idea of the passenger princess like you want to be able to sit pretty and like let the man lead so 
I think there's kind of merit to both of what you're saying, but I, I mean, and I agree with that too. too. Yeah. The one person that I did go on dates with, it's because they were like, we're going to go shooting at this time. Make sure you wear closed toed shoes, whatever, whatever. And as a mom aunt, who also solely is the sole financial provider, I, you're right. I don't, you don't have think. to think. Tell mm-hmm. me what we're doing. But do it nicely because I'm not going to deal with a condescending okay, asshole oh, either. The, the tone. Oh, I <laughs> yeah. can't take the tone. Oh my mm-hmm. God, the tone. I mean, I don't. It's terrible. You. I'll wake up in the listen? middle. I'll wake up in the middle of the night though and like smack you and be like, "Oh my God, I had a dream you were cheating." It's like, oh, the tone's fine then, right? No, I don't do that shit. But do oh, you, come on, do you you've never done that shit. No, but do you listen okay, to whatever. Bill Burr because you kind of like, you seem like you listen to Bill Burr. I like some Bill Burr stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You just like go into like kind of. You kind of sound like him sometimes. Well, I mean, great minds think alike. Agreed. I'm I sorry would. that he stole tons of my comedy mm. bits and <laughs> has taken them on the road, but I'm not going to hold it against him. Okay, okay, fair. Right? Mm. Going to uh, Yekka, is that how you say your name? Yes. Okay. You had a perhaps a disagreement. You said that, I think that if you are wanting a traditional relationship with someone who wants to live a bibl- biblical life just because you have a dark past with a high body count, our Father has given us the gift of forgiveness. If you are living a new life, if you're living a new life and have been living a new life for years, that's what should matter. So let, here, I'll start from the beginning. Uh, just because you have a dark past with a high body count, our Father has given us the gift of forgiveness. If you are living a new life and have been living a new life for years, that's what should matter. Nobody is perfect. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, God gives us um, the opportunity to be born again and be new people. And, uh, you know, if you've been living a new life, you know, you let your old self die. I think everybody should deserve, you know, another chance. Um, Nobody's perfect. We all struggle with different things. And uh, like I said, yeah, I just, I think we all have an opportunity to let our old selves die and be a new person if we are living in Christ. Yeah, sure. I think that being forgiven for those things is not only appropriate, but what Christians are called to to do, right, is to, um, to ask for forgiveness for their sins, right? That's, that's what they're supposed to do. But you don't, you wouldn't say a Christian's obligated to in any way date, uh, or not reject a woman based on body count. Right? No, I'm not saying that. Yeah. So I'm like if a, if a guy was a Christian chance. and he met with a Christian woman and he really liked her, he thought she was great, but found out that she had slept with 50 men and he was like, well, that's a deal breaker for me. You don't have an objection to that. Right? No, not at all. Okay. So then. In some ways, I think that this is just a cope position. And the reason I think it's a cope position is because what happens is many of these women go from literal online whoredom where they're like doing boy-girl content on OnlyFans, things like this, and they go, oh, well, shit, it's 30, time to get married, drop out of that, and then move over and say, now I'm a Christian. But then they get into the dating market as a Christian, and these men are like, well, I'm still not interested in you even though I'm a Christian. Right? Aren't they still setting themselves up for massive failure here? Like, he, he, sure, God forgave you. Great. And I'm glad you're a Christian. I'm still not dating you. Right? Isn't yeah, that absolutely. what they're going to say? I mean, like, even with age, you know, that's, <coughs> that stuff makes you less optimal than dating. Like you were saying, you know, your childbearing years are when you're younger. So, mm-hmm. you know, all, I'm not disagreeing with that at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it just, I don't really understand what the point is then. Like, they understand, I mean, Christians understand the forgiveness aspect, right? Yeah, Yeah. but not everybody has a perfect past. You know, a lot of people were grown, raised with uh, traumatic life events where they didn't have both parents in the household. Uh, They didn't know, you know, what being loved by both parents was or, you know, grew up with a bad past. Um, Yeah, I agree with all that. Yeah. But I'm not... Yeah, I, I don't know. I get. I think it's probably in reference to the episode that I was on, where the girl like became a Christian, and then Brian's like, kind of late now. Like, I think that's probably less of like the. I mean, Christian he was probably, he was probably now, so if when if it came to this idea of sexual dynamics, then yeah, it's becoming a Christian is not going to erase your sexual history. I think pretty much only Christians will be the ones if they have if they hold that view that would kind of like. 
be forgiving of it. Oh, they'll forgive it. That doesn't mean that they're gonna. <laughs> that doesn't they mean that they're to. gonna, you know, put a ring on it though. Right, and they don't have to. So. So is that it? And that's yeah. your position. Yeah. So. Are you when you say forgive? Like okay, so you can be forgiven through your faith or whatever, but you think it's like objectionable if men would refuse to date you because of your dark past of a high body count? I mean, I'm not saying it's objectionable. Um, I just think that other people with similar pasts look at it like it's bad, like, oh, you can't do that, but I can do it kind of like thing. So why would that be a problem? It's giving, like, it's saying that women can't have bad past but the guy can have a bad past like i don't think yeah well i mean it's just it's (laughs) so this just comes down to preferences right so it's like um this idea is okay let's let us assume for a moment you have a man he converts around the same time you do let's assume inside the hypothetical that both of you slept with a thousand people okay not saying you have of course not i'm just saying in the hypothetical we're just like assuming this right doesn't even have to be you just woman man both of them slept with a thousand guys or people they convert at the exact same time. Uh, they meet each other. They like each other. They both find out that the other one has slept with a thousand people. It's a deal breaker for the guy, not for the girl. He says, well, wait a second. You slept with a thousand too. He says, yeah, but I don't care. I still don't want to date you based on the fact that you have. I don't, I still don't actually see a problem with that. <laughs> like I can't figure out what the actual issue with that would be. I mean, yeah, I guess everybody has their own preferences, but yeah, I, I I don't think it would be okay if both people have similar dark past and one person's like, no, I don't, it's okay that I did it, but it's not okay that you did it. Well, no, well, you're both starting from the same slate though. So you both, you both have been forgiven for the sins, right? So, and you're, you're both, you're both pursuing Christianity, Christian ethics, right? Okay. So you're, you're starting equal. So he just says, okay, based on your past, I'm not interested. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't think that's okay. I why mean, is that but, not I mean, okay? If, it's kind of hypocritical. Yeah, but so what? Why can't you be hypocritical in dating preferences? Because I think you like should I hold de- your... I definitely um, <clears throat> 100% right, think that if you've ever slept with a guy, right, that it would be a deal breaker with you if a guy ever slept with another guy. Would that be a deal breaker? If a guy that I slept with... If slept a guy with slept guy. with another guy, would that be a deal breaker for you? Yeah. Have you ever slept with a guy? fucking hypocrite you tell me have you ever slept with a guy hypocrite have you yeah but not with somebody of the same sex so what you still slept with a man and he slept with a man why would that be a deal breaker hypocrite because one involves homosexuality and the other doesn't Andrew, well, wait a second better than wait, this. wait wait wait, wait. are they both sleeping with men weak argument are they both sleeping you with men better i'll refute it one has to do with homosexuality so? which doesn't okay it al- doesn't align with christian values okay wait a second that wasn't my question my question had nothing to do with Christian values. My question was, would you ever date a guy who slept with a guy? Answer is no. Okay, but he's expected to sleep with you who slept with another guy. It's like, okay, that would be hypocrisy. Tell me how it wouldn't be. Because she probably wants men who are attracted to women. They could still be attracted like to women. She would, ex- okay. Are they only attracted to women? Yeah. Okay, great. So what? So we could reduce anything that way, in fact. We could just in, endlessly make reductions. Sure, but you should probably... Can you give a better, Why do I need closely to give a, aligned argument? As soon as you give a logical refutation of the first argument. <laughs> but you were the initial person arguing. Nope, she was. She said it's a hypocrisy. I gave an, a, a counterexample of hypocrisy. You have refuted, not my, my example of hypocrisy. You're just not accepting that it's a false equivalency. What's false about the equivalency? One involves homosexuality, the other does not. Oh, okay, so any time that you make a, an analogy between two things which are hypocrisy, you agree they're always going to be different, right? Well, Hang on. You agree with me that anything you compare to anything else is always going to be different than the thing you're comparing it to? I think you can compare things that are a little bit more closely Not my aligned. question. You're evading. No, I think... I don't is every every instance of hypocrisy is going to be different than another so anytime you say you're a hypocrite no you're a hypocrite you both have done hypocritical things that are not the same thing 
So really don't know where you're I think you do know. No. But, but okay. No. But in this case, like I feel like we're like why would you not sleep with a man who slept with another man? Is it because it's because of the homosexuality, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. That's okay. What I'm oh, okay, 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 great. I'm if you weren't a Christian, would you? Leaving. What's that? If you weren't a Christian, would you sleep with a guy who slept with a guy? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Yeah, but so, it's still about the homosexuality. Oh, wait. Okay, oops. The attainment of the homosexuality here would be it's sinful. If you're a secularist, you can't say it's sinful, right? Well, you I mean, would just say it's it, gross. It's yeah, gross. Yeah, okay, sure. Say it's if, not if that's thing. what you think. So there's nothing wrong with having the preference of it's gross, even if you've done the exact same thing. There's nothing wrong with having the preference of thinking I agree. Gross. So her saying this is hypocrisy, great. This is hypocrisy, too. Well, she can also choose to reject him based on his past. Correct. Same. Even like, if she had the exact same equivalency. Like, I don't, like, I, will, I would do it if the, the uh, compatibility was there enough, but I don't necessarily want to date somebody with kids. You know what I mean? Even though I have them. So I get uh, it. How many kids Fucking do you hypocrite. Have? I have two. You Damn. wouldn't date a guy who has kids? I would if we were, like, super compatible, but it's not going to be the top of my list by Damn. far. Hypocrisy. I, exactly. Like, I'm owning it, though. It's, it's actually fine. Like, it's fine to, um, to entertain hypocrisy when it comes to dating preferences. I have no idea why it wouldn't be. Like, I'll give you a, a million more examples, right? Um, you probably would prefer to have men who are taller than you. Yeah, I mean, I'm not requiring, like, six foot or anything. But, but you would probably like it, right? Yeah. Okay. Would you reject a guy based on the fact that he wasn't tall, taller than you? Mm, not always, necessarily. No? What if he was bald? No, I like that. Okay. What if he, what if he was, like, really heinously ugly? Uh, no, I think there should be some physical attraction. Not, yeah, there has you know, to be... Not it doesn't have to be like head over heels instantly, but I think there definitely needs to be some sort mm -hmm. of. So you can think of probably all kinds of preferences and traits that you would like, right, to have in the other partner, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's back up and take kind of a bird's eye view. Uh, when you're talking about an argument from hypocrisy, the reason that it's fallacious to begin with, like, oh, you're a hypocrite, you should do this preferential thing that I like, is because it actually doesn't make any sense. Because whatever standard you're holding them to, you, you could easily be held to the exact same standard back, and you would likely be a hypocrite when it came to dating. Like, for instance, uh, you probably think a guy who has brown eyes, it's okay for him to reject a girl who has brown eyes. Is that hypocrisy? No. Why? Why not? Why not? I, they have a right to choose what they, they have. A right. They have a right to choose based on their preferences, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if they both have the same body count, why can't he just to still say, no, it's too high? I don't know. I think those are just, that's a different level of standards that people hold to each other. Like, I, I guess what my take is, it's just a lot of people uh, overlook the forgiveness aspect. And I'm not saying that if you don't want to make that choice to be with that person because of their past, like, I'm not saying that that's not okay, but, you know, I just think that... Do you uh, think that um, people who have assaulted children, have essayed children, can be forgiven? Mm. I mean, they can be forgiven, right? They can be forgiven, yeah. yeah. Are you going to let them watch your kids? No. No. <laughs> so, just because you've been forgiven for a thing, right? Yeah, I see what you're saying doesn't necessarily mean that suddenly oh well we're just going to look past what you did right mm -hmm. so yeah i see what you're saying yeah. all right i'm good all right uh moving to bella bella you said you met up with a guy that you met on 4chan slash discord in the hotel to fuck yeah so i actually like started <laughs> all of the my 4chan to discord <laughs> pipeline really yeah well i actually started like my online presence like on 4chan i basically just posted a selfie and it got a lot of attention and then i started posting a lot on the same board and i made a discord server for myself and i got a lot of like orbiters or simps or whatever and um one of the guys we ended up having a lot in common and i found him attractive and he was like would you want to 
meet up and hook up and i was like sure why not if you drive and pay for everything sure so he drove here and we hooked up and then he went home <laughs> mm-hmm. okay cool all right you said that women have it way easier than men when it comes to dating slash getting hookups yeah um i think that because of the fact that men want sex so bad um i think it's a lot easier for women yes um but in dating in general um also just because i think it's like a thing in our society whether it be due to like biological aspects or like you know societal aspects because like men are often the ones courting women so like women don't usually have to take the initiative um so like you know like as a woman like i never really approach guys and i think i have it easier in that way like men just you know like i think it's more common for men to just approach women and that's what i mean by easier mm -hmm. yeah I and this is from your own your own experience also i mean it's from my own experience and just like I feel like every woman's experience, honestly. Like, okay. But Sorry. I think it's like, um, <clears throat> I feel like the controversial part is that, like, um, I think that there's a negative side to that, too, because if you're, like, an unattractive woman, um, like, men won't really give you the light of day at all. Like, they will kind of see you as invisible, whereas, like, if they see an unattractive man, like, they'll still see them as, like, Mm -hmm. up here i completely disagree i think it's actually harder for better looking women um men don't approach you as often because they are intimidated with getting rejected and the average or lesser looking women actually get approached more because men don't want their egos to be shut i down. mean it depends on like how attractive you are though i it, guess it like if, if you're like a 10 yeah guys will be scared to approach you but that's because they like admire you so much you don't have to be a 10 i don't know about admiration i mean i just think it's a psychological it's almost like when you're fishing right like you want to draw your line and you want to get a bite and i think a man's going to go for someone that's more demure and less resistant to their advances yeah but i guess okay i guess like you're talking about like average looking women i'm like talking about like unattractive women like i think unattractive women have it really hard because those are the ones they marry <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. the thing well i mean like it's just like because i like when i was like a little bit younger like i've lost a lot of weight and like i've like noticed a big difference in just like the way that like men have treated me and it's like not even in like a romantic sense but just in like how they treat me as a human and i think it's because of how they view me like or like if they see me as attractive or not you know hmm. okay uh but you did say that you know you said women have it a lot easier than men when it comes to dating but a lot of that is a result of the patriarchy yeah so that's like what i was kind of getting into there is like I think that the whole thing with women having it easier was like created by men because they kind of view women as like a prize a lot of the time and it's not necessarily like like we're not necessarily like asking for that attention mm -hmm. um well right now what's happening in 2024 is beta males actually view themselves as the prize because they're not <laughs> sure, taking yes. the lead so like men for example who asked you out on the date who planned the date to said we're gonna go shooting like wear this those are the alpha males the ones that don't have to say they are i am so irritated by these accounts like on instagram that like have to say they're an alpha male like no you're actually not because the true masculine energy just leads and so I don't necessarily think that women, quote unquote, having it easier was created by men. I don't even think women do have it easier. I don't think either sex has it easier. I think there's... I definitely think women have it easier. Maybe certain kinds of women. I know. I Wait, I, which, which ones yeah, don't? Which, yeah, which ones don't, actually. I'm curious, too. Is it You said it was the hot ones that if don't you have... have if, if a man doesn't have... A big enough of a set to handle a woman who's intelligent and smart and attractive and maybe successful then yeah it is it is hard 
you you mean it's a thing brian wait you mean a pain in the ass no, because you can be, sweet. you can, you like can be, never talk to you, you can, they'll... you can be successful in your skill or profession and mm-hmm. be subservient in your relationship and submit. So I don't think the two should conflict. Is, men, it, is that like, something that you usually see with boss babes that they're very submissive? I don't want to be a boss babe. Yeah, I, I know, think, but I think do you that's think whole... that women who have careers and are very career oriented, highly career oriented, want to see themselves succeed in their careers are usually boss babes? Because that's been my experience. Here's what I don't usually see in women who are super driven towards career is that they're super submissive to men. Haven't seen that very much. Where are you finding all of these super driven career so submissive think, women? I'd love to know. I think what happens is certain people have been led in a certain direction because they don't feel they have the option. There aren't enough men that are up to par with Christian values or leading. I mean, there's so many beta males right now. You can agree with that. There is a lot yeah, of men I, right now that are... Th- my distinction here is like, th- I think I would agree with you. There's way too many fucking simps for sure. <laughs> um, but when you say, when you say a beta male, all right, versus an alpha male, um, I don't even, I don't even believe in those categories. Those are bad categories, right? Well, how maybe society. <laughs> so these, deems the, it. like the al- the alpha hierarchy, I just, I just think it's nonsense. But, but, um, like if you if you're talking about like a, a sissified man or something like this, sure, right? I can, I can see that or a simp or this type of thing. But I'd still like to know this phenomenon of where you're finding all of these really submissive, career-driven women. Like where do you think I don't all think, these women are? I don't think there any women unless you're like are a straight there? up liberal mm. and just delusional, I don't think there's any women who want to be career driven. I think it's the choice that you have because you haven't found any kind of a situation where you're going to be provided for. You're not just gonna sit in your dad's garage at eighteen and just wait for some night to come save you. That's just not the reality of the world. And based on well, the destruction of the nuclear family, that's seem where like we're at. That's career driven then. It seems like if I you're getting you a choice. career because uh, that's the uh, the alternative you have to being taken care of. Then that's not you being driven towards career. That's you getting a career because it's the only way that you can make ends meet. Seems like that's something you would give up very quickly if uh, if you if you didn't have to make ends meet. So I don't I don't really understand where that drive is exactly. I don't understand it either. But I can tell you that my ex, the girl he was with, in the years that we were apart. Like she, he offered for her to live with him and him pay all the bills and stuff. And she's like, no, I want to get my PhD. You can kind of like <laughs> fuck off. And, uh, I don't want to have kids either. At least not for many years. I'm That's just focused wild. on this. And I'm like, um, <clears throat> hi, I'll, I'll live with you. <laughs> I think it's crazy to not accept that. But, and and some of it's just like, you can't like the reliability of men too. Like you have to just a guy, I can tell you firsthand. I was married to someone who wanted to be a provider and all the things and then ended up, <clears throat> well, I can't get into that, but it ended up going left. So that's where the fear comes from for a lot of women. But some women just genuinely don't have that drive in there. And also, ironically, she was submissive to him and like I, we're kind of even keel with one another. And I'm more like trad wifey, I guess. And it's also a thing where people assume trad wives are going to always be submissive and just like let their partner steamroll over them all the time and that's also not the case like there's so many variables well, and all this the all depends dynamics. on how you want to define things right but tradition like how would you even define tradition it's actually a hard word to define what a nuclear family looks like the man works well, i mean bills. you wouldn't define tradition as just being nuclear family tradition mm-hmm. has a specific meaning in right? regards to dating though well, I mean, just in general, what would you what would you say tradition is? Following what generations before you did. Yeah, I think I think there's some truth. I don't think that that captures it, but it, it kind of has the right idea to be charitable, right? Best way I heard this described was um, tradition would be experiments that cultures have done that work, right? That's that's kind of a thing that we would point to as being tradition, like uh, Christmas, for instance. It seems to be kind of this experiment that the culture did and it seems to work fine right it's a stressful time of the year and we just can't seem to wait for it or wait for it to be over uh, but it's it's something that seems to work uh, Halloween uh, these different holidays uh, all sorts of different traditional kind of aspects of uh, American culture right uh, or Western culture 
biblical, et cetera. These are all experiments which work. So what happens when experiments start breaking down like the liberal experiment, the progressive experiment? People start to look at the experiments that worked, right? And they go, okay, we got to move back to those experiments because they worked. So that's what I think traditionalism is, right? So I think that the modern woman wants to have her cake and eat it too. Because at the time that marriages were working, women didn't have a fucking say, okay? That's the truth. You want to see the time where um, there was almost no divorce, right? We can, we can show you a time when the happiness index was likely they happier. They couldn't file for divorce, so they does could. it count? No, they could. Like, so you're accounting for like past the yeah, 80s? They could. Okay. They, could show, they could show cause for divorce. Even the church granted divorces for infidelity, things like this. But even in the early 1920s, 1930s, right, 1940s, People were, are, were much, much, much happier. And everybody you ask in modernity. Well, they could I, get a divorce, yeah, but they can have I've it. asked this question a million times. You think people were happier in the 1950s era right now? Almost every time the answer is yes, I think they were. Interestingly enough, women couldn't have the credit cards, though, right? Women couldn't have, they, they didn't have all this stuff. They didn't have all this shit. Very strange to me, right, why it is they didn't have any of these kind of feminist uh, ideals and yet seem to be far happier uh, when they didn't have all this say. So I think when people say tradition, they don't really mean tradition. They mean, I want modernity with this kind of LARPing aspect. The LARPing aspect being, yay, I get to stay at home and not fucking do shit, <laughs> right? Yay, this is great. But I don't think that's traditional. What's traditional about that? And tradition is supposed to be that you obey. That's supposed to be the tradition. The tradition's not supposed to be egalitarianism in the household. That's modernity. It's the opposite I don't know about of tradition. Obeying, but. Yeah, right. But why not? Because just the word makes you sick because you've been completely brainwashed, just been worked on your entire life. That obedience to a man, you have every bit as good as him, even though it has nothing to do with good. There was one of those burr moments. Um, it has nothing to I do think, with I good, think, right? Well, maybe maybe it's my social programming, but just my personality type in general. But like, obey, oof, don't, not a fan. Um, but I am a fan of doing the cooking and the cleaning and all of the things that exchange. you like to do, right? But that's well, I don't not obedience. I like to do. I like to cook. Yeah, but it's not obe It's not obedience for you to do things you like to do. It's obedience for you to do yeah, things that you don't like to do when you're told to do them. That's obedience. But we could also just say that the nuclear family dynamic works better, and you don't also have to be like totally subservient to your partner. It doesn't work. What breaks it down is the lack of subservience from the woman. The lack of obedience from the woman is what breaks it almost every single time. This is why, you tell me, why are they filing for divorce at such high rates? Why are they moving, <clears throat> pushing back against men at such high rates? They're completely disobedient in their relationships. Looks like you have something on this. Go ahead. No. I mean... You agree? Do you no. agree or disagree with Andrew? I don't agree. Why? Um... For a few reasons, I don't know. Just... You want to articulate those? Uh, on what specific points? Like obeying. Obeying. Okay, so I mean. Submission. I don't know. If somebody wants to obey, I just. Yeah. It's not obedience. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like I'll do. I'll do what you want if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, where does the obey part come in? Right. Well, I'll follow you as soon as I think that I need to follow you when you when I decide that it's okay to follow you. Like then I'll Ryan follow from you. The office. But um no, but like maybe Jesus obedience what? doesn't need to factor in though. Maybe we could just get back to men being providers and leaders and women being mothers and caretakers oh, yeah, great. and taking gotta, stress off of the men by yeah. handling the things that they don't have the time to do if they're Yeah, that's providing. great. You get all the perks and the benefits. I mean, not all, like, I don't think most women also want to cook clean and, you know, Oh, no, oh, that's so hard to cook and clean. Look at this. I don't okay? think it's hard if someone else so you get to bills. So you get to stay home all day. You get the luxury of being at home with your own children. You don't have to outsource that if you're not lazy and you actually homeschool. And if you're not, your kid's going somewhere else for eight hours a day. Literally eight hours a day while you're at home. Oh, my God. No, this I literally is, agree is, with you on this. This is terrible. This is horrible. It what is if, hard. What, it's horrible what's happening to women. It's like, no, it's not hard. And it is hard. on top Let's, of that, totally you say, okay, that. I get all the perks, all the benefits, but I don't, you know, I don't want to do that obedience. I have a question. Um, Fuck that obedience thing. And it's like, and I'm so not that's saying a pretty that, raw deal for men. But like, also, like, I can't even imagine a situation where one would need to be obedient because I'm like looking at my boyfriends and like 
ex-husband and like well maybe when it matters that's when but like so give me an example of like w- like what that's what i was gonna say like what like, what, like, is to what ex- like, like, like do you think you can beat your wife? for example like do you think that that's acceptable no what? okay but okay but like to what extent do you think she should obey though like what if she disobeys you within then what the do you confines do? of reason like so just give me she an has example. to be obedient within the confines of reason beating your wife would be sinful okay well if she doesn't obey you what do you do what would you do what for for disobedience yeah well the same things that she would do right now you would first you would uh try reason right you would explain what their duties are and you would go to your community in this case the church to see if you could get this reconciled right because it's a problem and what if she continues to disobey well then there's going to be uh extreme problems inside of the marriage and it's going to be a lot of fucking misery that's what (laughs) but marriage takes work between both people yeah i'm not disputing that it's like somebody doesn't want to do something i still want an example there's there's no disputing well okay i'm fine giving those examples right but when person asks me a question i have to give that answer then i have to give that answer now we've circled back to this one okay so exactly discipline discipline is a great one Right? What if your husband wants to discipline? He wants to use a belt. Can he? Yeah. See? It's I mean, like, I don't it's really, so easy. Honestly, I'm not. I'm going to get so much shit for this. I'm not totally against spanking. Like, I think it's, it's got to be age appropriate and it's got to be not. Yeah, but why do you get to decide that, not him? Because they're half mine and it is also my job to. Yeah, but them. I mean, okay. Again, but I guess that's one example. This would be sure. disobedience immediately. It's like, okay. okay, no, I think that the, it is the right age. No, I don't. What if he wants to take them? Oh, yeah, them? I'll disobey. Yeah, or, yeah, exactly. So so you'll move into the, the kind of like disobedient road. And so th- this is an easy example. Uh, schooling, um, extensions of, of, of what types of things you'd want them to do for, let's say you want them to play music or you want them to have uh, these curriculums. Maybe you're disagreeing on those things. Ultimately, somebody's going to have to ultimately be the decider, I think, again. But when I'm talking okay. about disobedience specifically it's like no you don't get to beat your wife that's insane doesn't comport with reason right but you can use shaming tactics and utilize the church to assist you in uh kind of moving moving and counseling the relationship the right direction this is actually uh it's below the threshold but alvin sam this is a great super chat you have a problem (coughs) being submissive but demand chivalry and breadwinners well that's what i was pointing out already right is that like you get to stay at home you got all the perks of this, uh, but well, no, I, you know, as long as, as long as I keep getting what I want, you do what I say. <laughs> well, I just think it for, for me personally, it's circumstantial and I'm willing to budge on a lot of things. Like I'm not probably as combative as maybe I'm making myself seem, um, but you're not just gonna, especially when it, because I have kids <clears throat> and they're my kids. Um, so maybe my perspective on it's a little mm-hmm. bit different than if we had a shared child um, well, but I'm willing to budge on a lot of things. Yeah, it, maybe, right? But that's not really the point. So the point really isn't reduced to, you know, if I think yeah. <laughs> that I should submit because it sounds reasonable, I will. Uh, that's beside the point. The point is supposed to be when it doesn't seem reasonable to you to submit that you will. That's the point. Um, you said something about the woman benefits, I guess, most if... The man's the breadwinner providing yeah, and switch. and yep um one thing i want to comment on is if the woman is providing homeschooling to the child let's just say it's that sort of a scenario mm-hmm. because right now a lot of people have issues with the school system yep. well then the man also is benefiting because that wife is capable of providing schooling for the child so that they don't get indoctrinated in the school systems that could this be to be the bare minimum the bare be minimum con- of duty and responsibility of a good mother is that if she is enabled by her husband to stay at home uh and homeschool her kids then she should that should be a duty that it, this is not when i see this idea it, it's like a top it's like somebody's spinning a top it makes no sense to me it's like Look at this great thing I'm doing. No, this is a baseline duty. It's a baseline duty. You know the public school's fucked. You know they're indoctrinating your kids. You know they're doing horrible things to them, right? You know this. It's like, so you have a duty, if you can, to stay home and, you know, homeschool your kids. You have this this duty. I consider that to be a baseline. I would not consider that to be something in addition that you're doing in the benefit of your own offspring. Agreed but that most if, women aren't doing it, though. Let's just say he marries someone who isn't capable of doing it. I would love to be able to homeschool my kids. I think it's something that's necessary right now, considering <coughs> everything that's going on. But 
I just think that it's unfair to say that only the woman's benefiting then from the man being the breadwinner. There's a dual no, benefit I'm not there. Only. I'm not, never. Okay, so I, I don't usually deal in monoliths. Sometimes, it, because there are some all statements which are okay, but I don't usually deal in, in monoliths. So uh, it's not that there's only the benefit to the woman. I'm saying the vast majority of the benefit is to the okay, woman. I just wanted to clarify that. Right? The vast majority is to the woman. And the ability, I think, is a gift. I think a man's given a woman a gift that she can be able to stay at home with her own kids. Because I got to tell you right now, you're a single mom, for instance. I bet you wish you were, be, you were able to stay at home with your kids. 100%. And so, like, that's a massive gift to give them. <laughs> but not enough to deal with... Um, with actually submitting... A shitty husband. Yeah, but think about what you just said here, right? See, that to me is, that's also bizarre to me. I don't understand that. Self-sacrifice for the purpose of your children. I thought you were supposed to be the nurturing ones. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> okay, but my situation's a little bit different. I, but I, I'm not saying you have to put up with physical abuse, right, things like right, that. Right. But the concession of just obedience for a, great, for a better life for your kids, it just seems like it's such an easy thing to concede on. And yet so many women are like, I just... Just cute. I just couldn't possibly. <laughs> I just couldn't possibly but do that. But there are provider men who are happy to involve you in every discussion and like there be compromise. Why is there, it, is there always this idea that like because the man ultimately decides that means a woman's never getting consulted? Right. But for example, like you talked about the spanking thing, like that might be one thing that I take a stand on and he may be like, okay, on this one. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that men who, like, he's suddenly just because of that one instance where he didn't put his foot down. No, and, sure. He can, he can make a concession to a reasonable suggestion. Of course. There's nothing wrong with that. Has nothing again to do with the fact, though, that what if he didn't? So it's not that, okay, you made a great point about spanking. And he's like, you know what? That's a really good point, And I think that we'll do that. The question is, what if he doesn't? If he goes, ah, I know you think that's a great point, but... You're fucking wrong, and I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, right? that's I would, where I would probably concede on a lot of other things. That is not one. Right. So it's <laughs> it's the idea of the concession with the obedience that like you still know better, and so that's why these relationships I think break down. I just do think there needs to be more emphasis placed on the value of a stay-at-home mom who is successfully raising the kids and homeschooling because the amount of money you'd be spending on childcare and education if they send if you send them to a private school it's instead free. Of what are you public, talking about? No, if you send them to private school, no, yeah, it's not. Yeah, private school. No, first no, no, of let's all, talk about before okay, they first even... of all, public schools, right? Um, you put them on a school bus. If you're uh, under the income threshold, they get a free lunch. They get free breakfast in many of them. Uh, they get free extracurricular activities. You have to get them some backpacks and shit. Low income people, almost everything is subsidized for them when it comes to schooling. Almost everything. Well, public okay, schooling isn't really free because your taxes are paying for it and you're costing them the rest of their life and being indoctrinated. Let her, let her finish. Yeah, okay. Most it's, yeah. it's just a matter of what you value more. Do you value having a wife who's going to be at home and be a stay-at-home mom and homeschool them and give you that better education. I just yeah. think there needs to be more emphasis placed on that because I knew growing up, a lot of us didn't value those moms that were stay-at-home moms, and it, that's a fallacy. Like Most low-income people, first of all, don't pay property taxes, okay? They may be affected by them, but they don't pay them because they don't own property, okay? <laughs> Poor people don't own property. They're not paying property taxes. When the levies get passed, they're getting passed by people who don't own property because they're outnumbering the property owners, okay? That's one. Two, all of, the, all of them, if they're under the income threshold, it's all free. And the lunches are free. Everything is completely subsidized for them. What totally about the subsidized. First five years of their life before they go to school because daycare you're not, is not free, even you're not if you're low income. Them, and you're I at am. home. At, what are you homeschooling them to do at five? Watch Sesame Street? What do you mean? My kids are already, well, my oldest, my three-year-old is already preschool ready because you do Montessori type homeschooling. You yeah, can absolutely that's, that's finger them at paints. Young ages. No, it's not. Yeah, what's preschool? What do you mean? Yeah, my, what do you learn to do at preschool? You, how, to, how, to, how to lick glue? My three-year-old knows all his letters and the, the sounds of each. He knows phonics. He knows how to count. He knows Your three-year-old can't read. I, no, but he knows phonics. Yeah, he because, knows sounds because he, he probably watches a show where no. he, he memorized A, B, C, D, nope. E, F, G all day. Definitely You're not, not teaching a three-year-old massive skills. Yes, Come I am. On. Their entire... Do I not? Her kids are I literally lesson plan for them. Mm -hmm. I literally their their room is a preschool. Great. I 
Yeah. So, and, but that's not the point. The point is the first five years you do have to pay for daycare and it is, it costs no, more. No, not if you have a stay at home yeah. wife. Exactly. Yeah. That's the point she's making. What's the point? That's the your benefit. And you're trying to say, wife? well, well, school's free. It's no, not. No, that's a gift to her. Years. She gets to stay home with him the first five years. And it's a gift to him as well. No, that that's not a gift to him. He doesn't have to pay for daycare. Okay. Okay. Let's back up. Okay. Um, do you think that if the roles could be reversed, right? Like, let's say the average man, okay, a woman was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to go and work my fucking ass off every day so that you can stay home uh, with the kids. Do you think that that's a better or worse deal for them? Actual deal. I would, I would be happy like to do one or the other. I don't, I don't care which one. I don't want to do both anymore. Um, so better or worse deal one, for him? For him? Yeah, he doesn't have to work. That's right. But it's also good so for So hang on, so it's a better deal for to, you because you don't do have you to work. Do it? No, why, why don't you equally, want to do it then? I think the point is why that it's equally it? beneficial. And that it's not it, equally beneficial. I think it is. And it's I think not. that the, the, whoever the stay-at-home partner is who's investing in the kids often goes underappreciated, which I think is her point. And that's what she's trying no, to bring awareness to. No, I don't think they're underappreciated. <laughs> I think that there's an <laughs> yes, overemphasis put on them over the working father. And that the truth is, is that the working father is the one who enables all this to begin with and is giving the greatest gift in the world to a mother, which is those first five years, you know they're not coming back. You never get them again. You already miss your three-year-old. You miss when they were one, and you're already thinking about all the shit that they did at one that you miss. Oh, I miss when they did that. I miss when they did this. Now they're getting so big. You had the great gift of being there for that entire spread of time. Yes. And it's like, what does he get? Nothing. To he save get, money. He get, oh, no, well, not yeah, really. See, by the way, by the way, if he is a man or a woman, would be more likely to tell you the truth. Um, I don't. I think probably equally. So. So if you if you had to pick one, you know what? Honestly, probably men because women tend to be more agreeable. So maybe they would be like, in some situations, more afraid of being honest. Maybe, maybe men. <laughs> I agree with your point, and it's funny you say that women are more agreeable because I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> yeah. So men? Yeah. Women? I think a woman. It's who's more honest? No. <laughs> Who do you think would be more likely to tell you the truth, a man or a woman? A man. A man. Why did you two pick woman? I value truth. I don't know. Okay. You think women would be more likely to tell you that? <clears throat> what is true? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I think women are afraid to hurt everyone's feelings. Yeah, that's how, I'm, like, I would be honest, and I'm a but, so I'll just, and a little autistic, so it's just like, I'm going to be, I'm going to tell the truth. But generally speaking, I feel like women might be kind of like, I don't want to hurt your feelings, mm -hmm. like. Or at least soften the blow. Yeah. With the positive before the negative. Yeah. I think a lot of modern men are kind of more sensitive and don't want to be upfront and uh, there is the, the curse of Eve where a woman wants to rule over man, and so it's really easy for them to just say the truth and uh, be open about stuff. Women? Mm -hmm. Although when I was dating, I never had a man, like if it wasn't, if we didn't feel, you know, like we were, had chemistry, I never had a man like come out and say it. I feel like I was always the one to say it Oh first. yeah, me too. It's a hard question. And then he agreed? Um. Because, I mean, you do realize that there's always the possibility that I had you some... thought that there wasn't chemistry. And then after you told him, yeah. he went ahead and agreed. Oh, yeah, I think so, too, even though. Well, then he's still not being honest. Even though he actually didn't think so. I had a couple. T um. Well, yeah, I mean, there's going to be incentives for non-honesty, sure. Yeah. I agree. We're just talking about... Um, I just was the first phenomenon. one to be upfront about it. Like where men will just like stay in a relationship instead of breaking up with somebody and just like make it miserable for the person until so they women. leave. Women do the same thing. Oh, I feel like we'll just leave. Nope, they definitely won't. Dot all depends. Divorce rates kind of reflect my point, <coughs> I feel. Yeah, and they're usually getting divorced after years, right? <laughs> yeah. And, but, and they cheat and they do all sorts of different things to... And they but keep, the men just stay. It's they crazy. Keep the, so do the women, right? It's not exclusive to men. Women will stay too. But we fought for divorce more. Yes, that is correct. So I feel like maybe we're more honest about 
like maybe in regards to how we view the relationship i just think they're more sneaky about it i think they're just more sneaky and they they plan exit plans and shit like that before they before they hit the the divorce filing i don't think that it's because they're being particularly honest well speaking for myself i was honest and gave multiple warnings yeah but i mean but generally speaking yeah yeah, generally I i wouldn't I just think because of women's nature, like you were saying, just the agreeable, like, don't want to hurt anybody, probably, overall. And also, like, maybe fear of, like, what would happen, um, depending on what the scenario is. But, yeah. I also dislike confrontation. So, if anything feels like it's becoming confrontational or um, not copacetic, I would try to avoid. (coughs) But the truth always comes out eventually in most cases. It's easier, I've found, with people to just be honest up front completely. And then um, you avoid, like, you know, that bullshit later on. I mean, women lie to each other so much, it's unbelievable. So <laughs> they lie to each other about how they think each other look and mm-hmm. about how they actually think. Like, I, there, there's so many times I've actually seen, even right here and whatever, Right. Oh, girl, you look so pretty, this and that. She gets up and walks over and is like, oh, my God, she's such a slut. Not kidding. Yeah, I see it that a lot, too. Make, and it makes people. female friendships hard. Yeah. Like, Bunch of passive-aggressive liars, right? <laughs> it's like, I'm just, just throwing that out. I've not seen a lot of the real direct, honest, like, what's in your brain is not coming out and being verbalized to the other person, like what you really think. Some other version of that is what's coming out. At least that's what I've noticed. Yeah, but then men will be like, oh, yeah, honey, you look great. Knowing damn to well. Avoid, possibly to avoid hurting your feelings, well, they'll sure, tell a white could, lie. It could be the same scenario for women to one I don't think it's the same at all. I think that you can, I think even the woman can tell that he wants to verbalize something different and they can even pick up context clues that that is the case. But I think it's far different you think to women mask it? literally look at another woman in the eye and be like, hey, girl, and then get up. And the second you get up, they're both talking shit about the one who just got up. That is so common, in fact, that women themselves make jokes about it constantly. So, yeah, yeah I think that I think that you can point to instances of men doing white lies for sure. But women just, like, kind of lied right to each other's faces. It's wild. I mean, I've seen a lot of guys, like, even my... Uh, Guys, my my friends that are gay, um, like they are nice to somebody in person, oh, or even on. even That's... heterosexual, uh, and then as soon as those people are gone, they're talking shit, like telling telling me exactly how they feel, or they're just joking about somebody, you know. Yeah, I'm sure it happens. I'm just, it just doesn't happen as much as it happens with women. <laughs> like I've, here, let me give you an example. You've probably seen a lot more men be upright, confrontational with other men than you have women. I mean, overwhelmingly. And that requires some kind of truth statement, right? In order to initiate confrontation, there's going to have to be some truth there. I'm mad because X thing. Well, I'm mad because of other X thing. So uh, I don't see women doing that very often. So just pointing that out. I do want to go back to the bow thing really quick. There's bow version 2.0. I want to change the question a little bit. Would you bow for the perfect man? Yeah. 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 Yes. Lucas donated $200. Yeah, thank you, Lucas. Share Appreciate one. it. Thank Time you, thank machine. You. Are you capable of abstract thinking? Point was that successful men age exist, have expectations similar to mine, but avoid you like the plague BC of their insufferable behavior slash ethos. If you, Thank you first, of, first of all, first of all, I was married. I left my marriage. There's, there's no lack of a, a lineup begging for the opportunity. So I don't know where you get the idea that people like avoid me like the plague. Stop the cap. Wait, there's a what? Check my DMs on Insta. Like, Wait, there's I don't get a, a what? In free second without. Wait, hold on. Up. There's a what? A whole lineup. Erroneous, erroneous. <laughs> of men yes. who want what? That act literally try to get me to date them. That's not. There's no lackey. I don't. I don't even think I'm special. I think like most women probably. You have don't at get least a look handful. as a woman. You don't get the W until you have the ring. I had it. Just be. Yeah, but you and don't have it now. 
Yeah, I haven't even so been in the dating for that like, long. You're like the L. That's the L. Yeah, right? but you don't have like the the ring because just because men want to fuck you, that's not the no, W. I don't think that they want to just fuck me, but I think well, I know that plenty of men want to date me. I've just left a scenario with someone who literally was asking my ring size already, and I just didn't want to be with him. But you're like, oh, all these dudes in my DMs. I'm not saying every That's single one of them want to, but many w. of them have made them very, made it very clear that they want to be with me. That, that's just and the life of a around. woman. Okay, exactly. This girl next to you so says it's easy mode for dating. I literally for just women. said I don't think it's just me. I think it's probably all of us have at least a handful. But what he's yeah, saying. Yeah, that's your default. But what he's like, saying he's is saying that we dub, oh that men think I'm talking about his comment. Can you stay focused? He's saying that they avoid us like the plague. That's such bullshit. Are you being avoided? You might be because you're married. Do men avoid you like the plague? Do you? No? Okay. What so, are you talking about? His comment. So I, th I think Literally uh, what we responded I to. think to be charitable to the comment, you can, I guess you can be literal with it. That's fine. But I'd be charitable to it. I think he's talking about long-term committed relationships. And the reason I would say that is because he keeps on contrasting it with his. Right. But I'm saying like there's like two very recent options for literal like two people literally trying to move me in and my kids i'm just i go slow yeah, but you don't like them so I it like doesn't matter them. but yeah not enough to move in with them it's just early right but i would do it with this one person though wait you're f two dudes no 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 i got rid of one johnny spiral donated 69 dollars and 69 cents Daddy likes it when Kitty says meow. He is a little catnip kitty. Now roll in it. Give it a little kiss. It's tasty, isn't? Good kitty. Such a good little kitty. Sincerely, Johnny Spiral. What the f***? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Johnny. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yo, Devon Yakon donated $69. Ya Yakon? The men you want to avoid, you like the plague. You f Thing about up, men you don't want is a much bigger L than you think it is. But like, I literally have one that I want. That's like, like currently. if a guy was like, "Yo, I approached ten girls and they all rejected me." <laughs> like, that's not a W. I'm not rejecting one though. That's oh I've literally God, not been divorced. Dave on, Dave on Jack on. That's your new name, by the way. Donated sixty nine It's your new dollars. name, Dave on. Men will say anything to women to get in their pants. Will they? Will they buy Snap your? out of it and get with reality. Will the they, right man will tell you the truth. Will they what? Will they, uh, like, buy your new divorce divorce lawyer and then fly out to California with you? And uh, A guy did that? Yeah. That's the ex that I got my gun from. An old ex? Yeah. He paid for and the, divorce, did you the, guys, the retrial lawyer. And did you guys hook up? Yeah. Yeah, well, then, yeah, of course. Where's, he, like, where's he now? That's what you call... That's at what the, you call... At the Airbnb. Flown out. But yeah, Wait. Never mind. No, he, no, no. Oh, so you came with here? <laughs> well, yeah, I you invited You came him. with him here? Yeah. I was like, yo, come with you me. You said you're He's single. Like, okay. Well, I am single. You're literally going to go f*** a guy tonight. But we're... What? It's like, hold on. We're talking again and trying to get to know each other again. It's been like five years. But yes, I'll, I, would, I would literally marry him tomorrow. Wait, so when did you relink? When I had to get my gun and then we saw each other and it was like poof, over with. When was that? Two weeks ago. Like two weeks ago. How many times have you guys been hanging out? Um, so I saw him that day. And then... Do you guys live in the same city? No. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Continue. Then um, after that, it was like, I don't know, he came to visit for this trip a few... Like, so he came Friday. And then he's been... We've just been around each other since then. Just to see if it can work again to like... You know, because it's been a long time. Like, are we the same people? Do we want the same things? And... I, this is why I don't believe when women say they're single. Like, they're fucking at least one dude, bro. It's crazy. You said you were single. Didn't I ask if there's a guy in the picture? I don't know if you said no. No, no, no. But... You didn't ask if there's a guy in the picture. You just asked if you are relationship status. Girl, I don't want to say I'm in a relationship. I'm if... single, but I've been fucking a guy for a month. <laughs> and we took a trip together... And he paid, for my, he paid for my divorce lawyer. He's and spent, we, by the way, I would marry him tomorrow. I would, because we have like two and a There's, half. I'm we were single. together two and a half years the first time. <laughs> I'm single. single. <laughs> well, we're figuring it out. Like, we might not end up together. So, okay. But this How is long have you been in Santa Barbara? Since yesterday. Okay. So, were you, have you been apart at all? 
Like, did you go out to get like a, a bite to eat and he stayed at the hotel? Yeah. Yeah. So if a guy stepped to you and approached you and asked for your number, I'm seeing anybody else. So you're not single then. Okay. Well, if it, if that's the baseline, but it's hard, to, you know, like today's standards of what's dating is like viewed. If like you if reject you a, a guy who you would otherwise be interested in, you're not single. I think. But I also kind of have, and she taught me this, this idea that, that like you're single until you're married. And I think that's a good point. What? <laughs> you're single until you're married? Yeah. A Bro. lot of women feel that way. Stop. She belongs to the streets. Yo, back to the streets you but go. I, no, I only sleep with one person at a time. Imagine a girl but said if, that shit. You've been dating her for three years. You're going to propose. Oh, I'm single. I'm single. Fuck well, out no, here. like Back to the streets. You it's go. only been a few days, okay? So. It's been three but weeks. But you just said until marriage, no, I didn't single. See him. Huh? You just said until marriage, single. Oh my yeah, I don't think it'll be long. I think it's a real po possibility, at least, that that could be the result. Was he dating you while you were a stripper? Yes. Hmm. Yeah. How much is, was your retrial He's a provider, lawyer? too. <laughs> um, 5000 dollars. And but my stepmom put a little towards it. So there's like there's like a it's a lot. I can't talk too much about the retrial stuff either. And he paid for your flight and the, the trip out here. He did not pay for my flight. He paid for his own. Oh, okay. So he joined you on the trip. Yes. Okay. I mean, that's not as. I suppose it's not as bad. He, you just reconnected, and he's given you a thousands had, of dollars. Well, but we had a very special connection, and since then, have not been able. Like we both special connection. So he's like single two years after. I broke up with him and then I got married and then he dated a girl for some years and like we both realized like we were trying to why did it end originally I wanted to move to Austin and he was kind of anchored in the Dallas area that's one reason also I had a lot of growing to do like <laughs> so genuine. you were a shithead yeah yeah mm. I really was it like and we didn't like but it wasn't did he pay? And did you did, at the time? Did you have any children? No. And now you have two children. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he has zero. He has zero. Mm -hmm. Is, there's, he there's, uh, Is that hard for you to show? conceptualize, well, Andrew? Well, Is he I'm going to explain if I'm going to explain know, this probably. phenomenon, right? Well, no. I mean, my, I wasn't the ex of my wife. Five sorry, points. but okay. But you, anyway, you understand so taking let me on explain. Kids. Let me expl explain the phenomenon here. No, every every single situation is different. I'm not beating up on somebody for being a stepfather, but this situation here is dated you, had no kids. Okay, uh, you weren't good enough for me. Gone, right? By your own admission, you weren't good enough. I'm gone. Then you end up with another guy, end up having his kids. Now suddenly guy number two, who's the ex, is suddenly good enough for you. Just pointing this out, no, that this is a phenomenon which happens it often. It happens, but I'm telling you, it was always this guy for me. Like, it was not like, oh, I thought this guy would be better. It was, this isn't working. This guy's totally different. So maybe that's what I need. Even though I'm crazy about you, this is just not good. Mm -hmm. And um, then I was like, this is... I just in all that time we could not get each other off each the other's and mind new, and it was very mutual does the new guy have resources um yeah he does yeah. wait the sorry could you repeat that the entire time mm. even while you were married to your yeah husband. i was always in love with him but you can be in love with someone and, and not on. be healthy and not want to be with them hold on, hold on. i'm sorry no i don't hold think on. you can i think you can no i really don't think you can but i think it. that it I think that anybody who would marry anybody who was in love with somebody else is. Um, well, I'm, I don't I think, think I necessarily always knew that I oh, was. Oh, you didn't still know. <laughs> Wait, can, can we just not hold on? I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I'm good at turning we things need, off. We need. We. I need you to repeat that because I don't want us to just glance over it because. <laughs> one more time. So, this guy who's your ex, who you're now, he paid thousands of dollars for your retrial <clears throat> lawyer. Used to date him while you were married to your husband. You were thinking of your ex. Yeah, often. During sex? No, 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 no. Jesus Christ, no. You probably were. You just no, no, no. I would tell you. I don't give a shit. No. I, I, would I admit? Just about how much you love this guy. Wait, and did it you? It took date, me a while to figure out. Like, did, did you date were you other talking guys? to him while you were married? Yeah. Um, yes, but my husband knew, but it wasn't often. It was just like ever so often. Bro. 
throughout the years, the here and there. Red pill, massive red pill. And did you have you dated besides your hus- ex husband? Had you dated other men? Like in between. My- so like you broke up with your ex. Were there other guys? No. So it was ex husband back with the ex, who I- you loved the entire duration of your marriage with the guy. Yeah. So sort of. Um, after I left my husband, awesome the ex had a girlfriend. So I, I did like go on a few dates with one other guy. Um, but when I saw my ex, I had to go get my fucking gun or else we would not have ever probably seen each other again. Um, but then, yeah, I was told the other guy, I was like, Hey, you know, I'm not with my ex or anything, but I'm just going to let you know, I don't, I can't be with you after seeing him or anybody for that matter. So I called that off and now we're just like seeing if, if it, if we're just romanticizing nostalgia or if it's like a genuine connection. Mm. But I think it, like, I would like talk and I would say it to my friends. I'd be like, I feel like he's going to text me soon. And we so would, it, um, and he it would. wasn't purposeful that you went to pick up this, this object no, that, you, that ho- you needed. It was not purposeful to see him in any way. Okay. I didn't know that he had the gun for a few years because at one point, and that's, I can't talk about that because it's legal stuff. Um, but anyway, he got the gun at, again at some point. And when I was with my ex-husband, I, did, I couldn't have a gun because my ex-husband was a felon. So it wasn't a concern that he had oh. it. It, yeah. So you ditched this guy for a felon you had kids with? <laughs> well, but he's not like, he, he sold weed when he was 19. Oh, okay. It wasn't like. He was not like a violent criminal. N- okay. He was, yeah, yeah. It wasn't okay. like, and he had his shit together for, he was just, I can't say that either. Um, but it's not were like you, what you're envisioning. When, when you were uh, saying your vows, you got married, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, were you still in love with your ex-boyfriend? I wasn't like thinking about him at that time. You said you were well, I probably about- was looking back. Like, you can reflect. Like, I don't know if you know what it's like to turn off feelings, but when that relationship didn't work, I just put it out of my head for like a long a sociopath. time. sociopath? <laughs> it just took, you know, you can bury things for a while, but eventually they come up, and that's essentially what happened. But it also came up, like, because my husband treated me awful. And I'm like, oh, God, I thought that was toxic. Before or after the wedding? After. So he was treating you well before you got married? Yeah. Weren't you treating him awful by being in a relationship with him while you were still wanting to fuck and be with your ex? Again, at that point, I wasn't actively thinking about my ex. Like, this is just something that kind you of... You admitted that you, while you were with him... Right. This is you post-marriage. Were, you were over your ex. Wait, so just to be... Here's the timeline. So, because mind you, typically, <coughs> you know, the further you get away from a relationship, the less and less feelings you have, you get over it. Typically. So you're saying... You break up with your guy, mm. and then no feelings. And there was then, feelings for a little bit. But so how did it go from, uh, okay, break up, feelings, feelings, dwindling, and then feelings. Devon Jackson donated Whoa. $69. It's Thank you, man. It's endless stream of fucking simps that create women like this. It's unbelievable to listen to. Get your shit together, fellas. I... I I think you're walking back the, these claims about your... So I tried to invest in something new, and I did successfully put the ex out of my mind for a long time. As things got tumultuous between me and my husband, it became harder to... Especially since my ex is also like reaching out at this time, so it's like reawakening things. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it just kind of like came... And then when I reflected, because I can turn things off, when I reflected, I realized like I built a whole life subconsciously to try to kind of get away from him this total i'm just gonna be totally this totally sounds like this guy's a plan b he i swear to that god it he was, was always it was anybody okay who knows me knows okay he's goodbye I'm, it's okay i can leave you behind you marry another guy and then when no. nothing works out this other dude he's there right? i would have never left if it didn't get so toxic at the end with him and it also felt like i was like well i mean but that just reaffirms that it was plan b <laughs> Right. I mean, but no, no, no. it was, uh, it, it's not like I'm just, oh, well, I'm divorced now. So I'm going to go. Cause there's tons of people that I could do that with. There's right. people with more money look, that I look, could I, do that I mean, with. I don't know. Like I, I'm not inside your mind. I'm not inside your but heart. Objectively. I get it's how. impossible for me to actually determine your intent. 
Do I have kind of my own thoughts on it? Of course, it sounds kind of silly to me. But the I, thing I is, it's like, it's also possible that you're totally telling the truth. I, I, I can't determine your intent. But I am going to make one prediction, right? 100% you're not getting married to this guy. You don't think so? Guarantee it. Maybe not. I guess it'll be up to him. Because mm-hmm. I'm letting him lead. Yeah. Weeks. You think? Weeks. Maybe you could be right. So to the viewers, <laughs> you got two massive red pills. One, she said she was single. She's been having sex with her ex-boyfriend for three weeks. Two. They've flown out together. We didn't see each other for He's one. invested in her, paid for her lawyers. But she's single. Only the second because... red pill, the second red pill is that during the course of her marriage, she was fantasizing about her ex. That part's fair. That's red pill number two. That part is fair. But the first part is so bullshit because I am single uh-huh. because we haven't agreed that, like, okay, we're going to for sure do this. We're just figuring it out. Johnny Spiral donated $69.69. <laughs> I love you, honey. And my ex. I let guys watch me take off my clothes while you're at work. I can't stop thinking about my ex. And his juicy red hot dog. Good little doggy. Sincerely, Johnny Spiral. I haven't danced in like 10 years, y'all. I don't Thank know. Thank you, Johnny. Oh, there's a third yeah, red pill. Yeah, but say your ex was around during that, right? Or like eight years or something like that. Yeah. Okay. There does exist actually a third red pill that Andrew pointed out. And this is the fact that you dated him. They're the ex guy. You dated him. He sound, sounded great, but you said there was a move that you wanted to make. And that you there, were there you were, were being issues. a shithead. There were a lot okay. of issues, like it. Mostly because of you. you. Mostly me, yes. Yeah, like I did the bigger you. things. Okay. But. Yeah. So the bigger red pill here is that relationship ended. You now have two kids from another man, and you are now back with him. Now that. We don't know yet. Uh, what Andrew said. <laughs> we don't know yet. He Andrew has put to, it much more eloquently. He has to see, like, we have to see if he can, if he's really willing to take on kids and if we're still compatible and if we even still yes. know wait, each wait, other. Wait, 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 wait. That's not oh, the, that's red pill number that, four. Hang on. That's not the key. That's not the key. The key isn't what he's willing to do. The key was when you said, I would marry him tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So the, the key in here is like... Just so you know, right, if that is the case, no, there's not going to be the marriage. There's Why do you say that? This. There's not going to be any of that. Why do you say that? Because you're a play toy. He, he, you, you screwed him over, and he's getting massive revenge, and he's I having mean, he a, left he's his literally whole, having a ball doing he it. He left a relationship to get back with me that he had been in in three years. He doesn't give a fuck about no relation. Oh, now he left his relationship, too? I have re- boy this is real he, what? Wait, wait what? what he left his relationship what wait he was dating a chick yeah and so once I got divorced oh. it was like so what are we, and then but we saw each other in person and we it just was like day one and so we both were like we can't not do this dude you know wait so, so, hold so on. no I'm not here's, a play toy wait, I assure chat. you here's red pill number four you said when it came to your kids I think you said something along the lines of, and you can just restate it if I get it wrong. You're still trying to figure out if he's like kind of ready to take on the Mm -hmm. the father role. Well, not and not right off the bat, but like anytime you date someone, you have kids. Can you just restate what you said? Something about like you have to see if like he if he can handle, you know, playing stepdad. How many kids do you have? Two. Two. And how old are they? Two and three. Don't you think? Having that conversation would be well, we've had appropriate. The, we've had the conversation before but, you fuck him again. No, we've had the conversation for years. The reality, Wait, but you have years. Kids, but hold on, you hold were on. with your husband. I tried to ago. file for divorce, couldn't because I was pregnant. Then oh, he got me God. pregnant again. We'll just say that through no fault of your own. Genuinely no. And um, anyway. So, okay. Okay. so right. I was kind of like stuck, but, but my husband knew, I told him like, I don't want to be with you. The second that I can leave, I'm going to, I'm in love with him. So this is just what it is. This is the I, wildest I never, fucking story. I was I've never weeks, not, dude. this is the wildest shit I've heard I was never not weeks. honest about it. And so we would just text ever so often. 
And okay. there's been times so, where he, like one time wait, he drunk texted one me thing, one thing, right? and he was thing, like, one? I've thought an unhealthy Sorry. amount about raising your kids and I don't know if I wait, can have kids okay. and all these things. So, so I get, that, about I get that you guys have had conversations in the past when you guys were used to be dating mm-hmm. and you talked about what does the future hold? Are we going to have kids? You have kids now. No, no, no. We've Hold had on. these conversations since I had kids. Sure, sure, that's fine. But you have kids now. What conversation is there to be had? You have kids. Right. It's either get get on board. Why would well, but why you, would you date a you guy can, who's not no, about no, the kids? You can conceptually be okay with it, but and I'm not letting everybody around my kids. So that's you can't Red just Hill 4, by no, the no, way. no, because you can't just let anybody around your kids. So anybody that you talk to might think they can do it. But until if they don't have children, they don't know the reality of being around fucking toddlers all the time. Sure. It can be overwhelming. So that's what the trial is about. Like, you think you can handle this, can you? And also, Andrew, like, you had something? I just wanted to make sure that I reiterated this correctly. You can correct me if I am wrong. I'm you, going right you dated, you date, you have Tourette's now too? <laughs> Well, I've always had Tourette's, oh. yes. I have motor t- No, no, Great. no. I, don't, I have persistent motor tic disorder. So, oh, like, okay. just not Dibs. local. All right, all right. Gotcha. So. I took some milk. <laughs> anyway. Just kidding. Fucking so, gosh. we start with when you were doing stripping and OnlyFans, you meet this guy. You dated him. You loved him. You adored him. Right? But you were a shithead. And so, when he moved, um, you guys broke up. Right, and this was mostly your fault. That's, that's a very short version. Yeah, yeah, this. mostly your fault. Okay, so now you enter into your marriage. You get married to this guy. Uh, you think he's great at first. You marry. You're still secretly pining after your ex, though you have buried these feelings. And about the time that you get pregnant the first time, uh, that's when you really decide, oh shit, I don't want to be married to this guy anymore. And that's when the feelings of the ex really begin to reawaken. Well, that's when like all the abusive crazy shit started to happen. But that's when the feelings for the ex really started to unbury themselves. Maybe after that, um, it kind of like unfolded very slowly. Okay. Um, and then it moves. Okay, got it. And then it moves now past this to your divorce from the ex. <laughs> You met up back up with him because you wanted to go get your boom boom stick, and um, well, he no, happened to on, have it on. for whatever reason. And there was a little bit more going on than just the boom boom stick. There was two boom boom sticks over there. Apparently, you wanted. So you go over there, right? You no. get both of them. Mandy Vower donated sixty nine dollars. This chick has officially made me want to shit in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> so right. So then, okay, no. Okay, no. Hold on, I get divorced. I'm like, yo. And he's like, well, I have a girlfriend. And I'm like, okay, fine. Wait, so wait. So you to, hit him up because you wanted to be had, with him? I mean, yeah. Like, But we, he had a girlfriend? No, no. He had like hit me up over the years saying like, oof. And I feel so bad talking about this because I'm sure. She, yeah, it's fucking horrible. Like, wait, you, your ex-husband, you were having an emotional affair with him because you were in love with this other guy? Well, and he was yeah. hitting you up and you were actually talking to him? And then we fast yeah, forward my to when knew. you're divorced, you because, hit, because you hit my, this other guy so up. And he, hang on, le- hang on. I just want to make sure I got this right. You don't when you're already. divorced, you hit this other guy up and he's with a chick. For, and he's been with her for three years and he left her for you? So here's the thing. Um, I was already like done with my husband. I just We were legally married. Like I couldn't leave is the issue. Why couldn't you leave? I don't have any family in the state. I had two back-to-back births and like definitely couldn't financially leave, couldn't afford a divorce attorney. He's also telling me if I left, there would, it was scary. Okay. Pri- okay. okay. So I was kind of just like stuck for a while. And um, simultaneously, he had been with the girl for a few years. It wasn't going anywhere. He wants a traditional woman, like someone to start a life with and have children and she didn't want to do that she wanted to do the boss babe i'm getting my phd no i'm not gonna he bought a house and he gave her the opportunity to move in with her him and live there so like it wasn't that serious um but they kind of just had like totally independent lives after three years but essentially what happened is we found the opposite of each other thinking that would be better and then it very mutually well, like that's that sounds very romanticized and <laughs> like i'm not it, saying it's and healthier it also, it also sounds really like um 
you're trying to fit the pieces together in order to form a, a narrative that you like, right? Well, maybe, but I've talked to other people and dated other people, married other people, and for I can at least speak for myself that that's mm -hmm. it's not comparable. Okay. So no, but so listen. So he had texted me actually a few times, and I'm like, um, you know. Well, if you, are we gonna fucking do it or not? Because I'm, I'm not gonna do this while you have a girlfriend. So like, you have to get rid of the girlfriend. So then he's like, mm, I don't know. It was pretty toxic with us. Maybe not. So then I go through a whole grieving process. So he was still with the girlfriend, and you're the other woman. No, no, no. We didn't do anything. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Back up. If you're telling him, if you want me, you have to ditch her. You're the okay. other woman. Okay. So yes, but nothing's happening at yeah, this point. Yeah, I get it. You're not screwing okay. him, but you're still the other woman. Right. Okay. So sure. She was, she was borrowing him for me really, but yes, whatever. Anyway, I go through a whole grieving process. And I'm like, fuck this. I'm, so by the time my house got broken into, I even brought a friend with me, had the friend knock on the door. I didn't want to see him. I didn't know how it was going to go, but I needed my fucking gun because you apply for a gun mid divorce in Texas. Apparently they're not going to approve it until after your court date. Cause they're like, you might go kill your ex-husband. What do you mean apply for a gun in Texas? You don't have to apply you for guns. You have to do a background check and they can put holds on it. Yes. Yeah. For three days. Nope. Yeah. I did it. Andrew. So you got denied. No, I didn't get denied. They just never fucking did anything. What are you What are you talking about? They ran the... Okay, you went down and you filled out your 4473. Yes, and the people at yeah. Cabela's told me if you have a pending court date, it can take over a month. So I'm like, okay. So then she loans me a gun and it... I When the person breaks in my house, I noticed the triggers pulled all the way back so I couldn't even do anything like if I wanted to. And she didn't know that, by the way. Um, so I'm like, fuck. And then I was okay. just like so like shaken by the whole experience. I'm like, I have to go get my gun. So I did, and I had my friend knock and everything. And then he looked out the door and was just like staring. And then that was it. That was it. Yeah. Even though you had been texting him and everything else for years. Like once every six months or yeah. something. You but gotta yeah. keep those coals burning. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a wild, 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 wild tale. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie, wild tale. But okay. I mean, again, I don't, you know, I don't know the intent and I don't know the, all the details for the story, but I mean, it sounds fucking horrible, but I don't know all the details. So. Wait, Alyssa, do you still do uh, spicy content? Yeah, do you? I don't have OnlyFans anymore. I've done private snap over the years, but not currently. Oh, well. Somebody, maybe I, they might not hear me, Andrew, but uh, you still have an XXX Snapchat? You have an XXX Snapchat? It exists, but I don't log into it. Oh. Somebody told me. Okay. So you're not doing any new content anymore? No. Whatsoever? No. And even like when I did private snap throughout the divorce proceedings, it was just like recycling old shit to kind of, like I had to do something. Because I did apply for benefits and got denied somehow. I don't know how the fuck that happened. I even started a cleaning LLC to have something that I could take the kids to work with and got my real estate license. But then all that shit happened with the real estate world where it's like almost impossible to do real estate now. So, I mean, you know, my husband, my ex-husband was not helping with the kids. And I had to do something. So there was a time even after becoming a Christian, yes, where I was doing like private snap out of necessity because I don't have like the family members that I can call and be like yo it's get... always out of necessity it's like, and get, like get a job doing telemarketing or some shit I tried I, sw I can even prove it I applied for so many work from home jobs and <sighs> paid somebody to do my resume even mm -hmm. And but the cleaning LLC is getting me by right now so cleaning not... houses mm -hmm. okay when you have kids this is where you gotta humble yourself you know they have supported it's, kids it's, for It's honestly kind many, of therapeutic, though. So, like, I don't dislike it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, I don't really know where to take that story because I, I think we've said all Point the is, to be said. People will fucking commit. It's not an issue. Weeks? Just just my opinion. Weeks. You, Weeks. Could, you could definitely be right. Things like that are so fragile anyway. Like, I'm not naive to the fact it's that... It's a it honeymoon be... period. For sure. Yeah, I'm not naive to that. And then the revenge will come. You'll see. It's revenge. 
I've implanted it in your brain now, and you're going to be thinking, I've thought be about like, that motherfucker's this... right. It was revenge. <laughs> he wanted revenge the whole time. That's not, I'm not naive to that. He's either. sitting, That's... you know, he's sitting at the Airbnb right now, and he's like, excellent. It, but then he went, this motherfucker, just told, this motherfucker just told student. on me. What the fuck? I don't, I don't think he would have left the PhD. Student. Plus the shock on, actually, everyone who knows us is not going to be shocked. They all know on both sides of our family. Our, my whole family is already like, yeah, yeah, we've been waiting for this shit to happen. All our friends, like, everybody's no no one's surprised but um it is crazy i know it's crazy though all right <laughs> i'm gonna what go uh i'm gonna go have a so dmo says thoughts on premarital sex i'm in favor of premarital sex i feel like you pops you coomer don't, don't coomer. you're coomer. you're the coomer you're fucking coomer dj I don't believe in marriage, Andrew. You want me to die a virgin? Hmm? <laughs> if I don't believe in marriage, how am I going <laughs> to accomplish the um... Okay, okay, well, hang on. Fair enough. So let's let's uh let's get into it real quick. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's do it. <clears throat> so you're not a coomer? Would you have Did I say that? Would you have sex with a different random beautiful woman every single night for 365 days with zero commitment? Would, would I do it? Yeah. Hmm. Can I like, would I, would I do it? Mm -hmm. STDs? Zero. Zero STDs? Yeah. They're just all beautiful, clean women. And there's a new one every single night for 365 days. Would you bone them all? Can I get them pregnant? Nope. I can't get them pregnant? Can't get them pregnant. They've all had hysterectomies, bro. <laughs> 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 Uh, and big labias. <laughs> and, uh, hmm, that's a good question. Would I do it? <laughs> Don't get me wrong. You know, as a man, I got to be, I got to be realistic here. You know, so um, I do prefer long-term relationships. But would I do it? Like it's handed to me on a silver platter, Andrew? Sure. Why Coomer. Not? Coomer. Hey, hey, hey. Coomer. I will grant to you that I'm a, I am a Coomer. <laughs> There's degrees to cumin. There is degrees There's to degrees cumin. There's degrees to cumin. Yes. Okay. Yes. And you're like the yeah. It's a very oh, yeah. it's a very low degree of cumin. Fun. Yeah. yeah, that's true. But in normal in reality, I'm not really into one night stands or anything like that. I'm Unless you're with a, beautiful, a a different beautiful guy. woman every night, <laughs> then you'd the, be the into thing is, <laughs> but, You know, the thing is, is that it's. Um, you know, it's, uh, in your you defense, you though, I feel like that question is loaded and that 95% of men would be like, yeah, <laughs> to be I honest. Like, like, man, a lot of men would uh, take it. You yeah, know? I think I think they would, to be honest. So there but like is... for, I would take it for a period of time and then I would go out and find the one. And then we can have seven sons <laughs> and children and also not get married. But seven sons. Would you get married in a way where the state wasn't involved? Sure. No. Well, yeah. then you're not you're not against marriage. You're just against the state. Yeah, but it's kind of you know it's tied together. It a is. Little, a little I agree. Bit, you know? I so, agree. At least in the U.S. But but wouldn't I mean? Aren't there even uh, religious laws at, as it pertains to? I don't know if laws is the right word, but are there not prescriptive? religious doctrines as to what happens in the event of a divorce when it comes to yes supporting your ex-spouse yeah usually they they don't they don't force that they oh. they usually put in their ecclesiastical authority you need to support your children um, sure that's that's fair that is fair that's fair you do need to support your children mm. uh i think that well you wouldn't be able to get divorced no donated right? 100 get divorced depending on Could all I the circumstances, two women, circumstances one for each week does that make me less of a coomer than Brian? Make Noah, mm -hmm. less of a coomer. Like if it's instead yes. of one every day, it's one each week. Yes. Okay. So if I like stuck with like one girl like for a month and then it was like next, 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 like less of a coomer. Less of a coomer. Less still a coomer though. Yeah, still, still a coomer. coomer. Yeah. What about like one one per year? Like still coomer. You're still a coomer. Still yeah. a coomer. Okay. What if it's like he, the, you know what makes it the cooming? What makes it the what, cooming is yeah. that you think that that's okay. That's the coomer part. Where you're just like, yeah, man, I'm just gonna like. All these chicks and don't give a fuck. 
right? That's the Coomer issue. <laughs> I no, I give fucks. You wouldn't give a fuck if it was a beautiful woman, 365 days in a row, a new one every single night, and it was totally you wouldn't care. Care what, when you say wouldn't care, what do you mean? Like define care. Like it wouldn't upset you, or you wouldn't think there was anything morally incorrect about it. Nah. Nah. I would, no. care. <laughs> yeah. I would care about the, the woman. Yeah. These are women who are coming to me. Sure. I'm just minding my own business. Yeah. Oh, hi, Brian. Once a pussy. Maddie Brian. donated $100. Hi, my memoirs are coming out next month. PLS hit Mike for more info. I have no idea. Okay. Me the Maddie Mem memoirs? Memoirs? <laughs> Okay. My time being abused on whatever. <laughs> Brian wouldn't let me have water. He wouldn't let us have food. It was torture. Mm. Uh, so, what were we talking about? Oh, I don't know. Uh, the question Cooling. was, oh, pr thoughts on premarital sex. Going around the table, just getting everyone's input. It happens, so. That happens. It happens. <laughs> Going around the table. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's an accident. It's just like, I slip. Uh, <laughs> it's almost necessary if you're looking into marriage because if you hook up with that person and it ain't it, there's no marriage after that. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you're talking about the myth of sexual compatibility? Why is it a myth? It well, is a myth. Yeah, it, I think it is. Well, here, let me, I, again, I'll give you my reasoning. So... Um, if you're a person who's only spent your entire life, let's say, isolated and you've only eaten steak, right? How do you know that steak's not the most delicious thing on planet Earth? That's a good question. Yeah. So if you're a person who spent your entire life with just one woman, right? And she's only spent all of her time with one man. What is the frame of reference here for what is not compatible? That's true. That's why I am all for the sex before marriage so you can test the waters test the water. yeah but that would be the reverse of what i'm saying that would be like the opposite right <laughs> like, yeah. now you're like Wait you now you've had lobster and you've had you know uh you know, sushi and you've had now you have a very advanced palate right <laughs> but whereas before it was like eh, meat and potatoes are fine what's your frame of reference um, well, you know. So, that if you've always thought for the rest of your life with the only sexual partner you've ever had, that's the most mind blowing sex that you could ever have. What the f is a problem with that? Mm. Well, <laughs> you might want to experience lobster. How would you know? And, well, if you know of it, right? Okay, yeah, you can know of it, but if you have well, not, if you have not tasted of it, then you're gonna want to go taste the rainbow, right? No, well, taste the not? rainbow. Why? Do, why wouldn't you want to go taste? All I've never ones? sucked. A dick. I don't want to go suck any. How do you know that? What do you mean? How do I know that? <laughs> you never try. You only stuck to. I'm aware that there are men know. who suck, but I definitely don't want to go suck any of those. <laughs> so, like, what do you mean? This idea that because you're aware that there are women who sleep with many, many, many men, that that means you need to be one of those men, just seems absurd to me. The idea here is that if it's one man and one woman. And they're both, let's say, virgins when they get together. Those relationships usually last, by the way. They usually last uh, clear up until death. Very low divorce rates, especially if there's religiosity behind it. And the reason when they investigate why is because, well, there's no... There, what, what are they going to compare it to? They have no comparison here for, you know, they're not comparing this guy to this guy to this guy. So imagine, imagine talking to the man and the man hearing this from you. Well, I'm going to compare you to Chad and Chuck and Fred and right and your performance to this guy, this guy, this guy. Wouldn't that sound super unappealing? Yeah, it sounds unappealing. It sounds super unappealing, right? Absolutely. So that that's that's why I think it's a, this the sexual compatibility is just mm -hmm. kind of a myth. And by the way, I also think that people's sexual compatibility increases the more they have sex with each other. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, mm -hmm. that's true. Um, yes. And multiple orgasms. Here, I'm going to try to get through all the notes here. So going back to Rebecca, very mm -hmm. single. Uh, you have a lot of crazy dating stories. You I said know. one time you dated a drug dealer and you lived in a trap house. 
and he <laughs> went to a party and another man pulled a gun on him for mentioning my name mm -hmm. because he was in love with me too yes correct okay, okay. i have a super important question yes. what kind of gun was it uh shotgun that's all i know just like <sighs> yeah i know nothing crazy shotgun no specifics Shazam. you can't tell me if it's a remington or a winchester no i think it happened pretty fast i don't think that's what they were looking at I couldn't be a browning scared. smith and wesson makes it, shotguns it could, be, yes. it could be any of them i don't know i couldn't tell you yeah was it a pump action you would have to ask them was it a double Saw barrel off. side by side maybe <laughs> who's to say semi-automatic perhaps probably if I had it was a semi-automatic shotgun if I, had to guess, if I had to make an assessment yeah i would say it, it probably was yeah okay the important question exactly. was asked. Yeah. Uh, let's yeah. see. Another time you brought a guy that you were with on a first date with uh, out to meet some of your friends at the bar. Mm -hmm. He decided to take a massive amount of Molly, which he had never taken before, and started expressing all of his internal thoughts externally. I had to calm him down for the rest of the night. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, was one, he was one narrating? Time. Literally his own like, <laughs> thoughts. It was insane. Like, he took the largest Molly rock crazy. I've ever witnessed. I was like, you shouldn't do that. And then he did. Wait, it was pretty bad. Well, I saw a clip of you saying that you gave him the Molly. No, that was just a general statement. It was like this other show that I was on. Um, also, so satirical i don't i don't really give people molly but okay yeah uh you said one time you met a british man on raya who mm -hmm. used to be in a screamo band during the warp tour days mm -hmm. we went to dinner got mm -hmm. black out got matching cowboy hat tattoos and still <laughs> talk to this day true when's That's the last time you hooked up with him um it's been a while but he lives in san diego but we still talk we're still friends someone that didn't really answer the question i mean i probably like i don't know a year maybe eight months or something Hmm. Yeah. Um, what screamo band? Can you tell us? Um, I can't. I Don't feel like he wouldn't want me to. Yeah. I feel like he wouldn't want me to, or else I would. Okay, it's a great that's band fine. Band. No, you don't have yeah. to. You don't have to say. Have it. To... Warp tour days were mm. the best. Weren't they? It was the best of days. It was the <laughs> Completely best. agree. I was there. Oh, I was the seven through like twenty twelve. Blink one eighty two. You don't know? <sighs> it's like rock little emo era. I forgot you've listened to that. You listen to Blink one eighty two, don't you? You don't listen to Blink-182? No. No. Terrible. It's terrible shit. Look, no. Andrew, you gotta understand, right? You gotta understand here. There's something... There's something appealing about the optimism of the sort of... This optimistic punk pop music. They really captured the essence of the late 90s. This is pre-9-11. There's an optimism in the music. You look at the, the late 90s music. It, it really, it captured, there's another way, the optimism of the, the 90s, of the late 90s. The 90s is when all of the punk band or i'm sorry well, the look, unalive punk grunge. bands were yes there that was, was grunge, what do you mean Pearl kurt cobain Jam. all those people what do you mean yeah but if you listen to like alternative music in the in the night the late 90s there was an optimism to the to the music and now it's so contrived and it's it's all terrible now amen <laughs> blink blink 182 was terrible right andrew i you you need to retract that statement sir okay you're right if awful no retract <laughs> i need a retractment retraction horrible retraction. all right horrible, uh, terrible okay. awful is, um all right well you you a pantera guy what are we talking i mean pantera's good yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. how about how about some good old you know like metallica scorpions yeah you know, how about how about some good bands metallica's okay yeah how about some ozzy osbourne Ozzy Osbourne. They got like one good song. Black Sabbath has one good song. No, Ozzy Osbourne. How about some Jimi Hendrix? He's got like one good song. Jimi <laughs> Hendrix has one good song? Okay, you compare uh, Blink-182 to Jimi Hendrix? Okay. How about Creedence Clearwater? How about anything which is better than Blink-182? Fortunate Son is a good song. That's the only song. Can you more. name one other Cre Creedence Clearwater <laughs> Was it movement? Yes, Proud Mary. Yeah, Does Proud it... Mary, uh, Susie <laughs> Q, which, the, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. Who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about, uh, are you Pearl Jam? Oh. No, not that, Pearl Jam. <laughs> okay, uh, Stone Temple Pilots. Jeremy spoke What a terrible oh. song, dude. Oh. Look, first of all, <laughs> Even Flow, I think, is a bit... Well, I, I think Even do. Flow is their superior single, for, for starters. Also, Eddie Vedder, look at his, his solo ambitions, Hard Sun. Arguably, I don't know if you've seen the movie... Uh, 
Into the Wild, Hard Sun, fantastic song, Andrew. And you would love it out it there. It was in a the terrible woods. song and a terrible Hard movie. Hard Sun? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Oh, okay, Andrew. Okay. <laughs> hold on. Terrible song and a terrible movie to go with a terrible song. Look, I'll give it. To, I'll give you that. It was some hippie shit. Okay. It was some hippie shit. Hard Sun is a fantastic song. Yeah, I think we're. I think we're just gonna have to do a hard disagree here. You know, I think we're gonna have to do a hard. You have to agree with me on this. Yeah, I'm. I'm just not, not gonna do it. It's pretty terrible. Pretty terrible. Soundgarden. Black hole song. <laughs> no. No. Well, so, I mean, Soundgarden's Black, good. Soundgarden. Yeah, Soundgarden's good. Not Black Hole Chris, Sun. Uh, what's his name? Cornell. Cornell. Yeah. Yeah. You mean one of like the best singers of all time, Chris Cornell? Yeah, he's a grunge. Yeah, I, I said I said Soundgarden's 90s. good. Not Black Hole Sun. That's not good. You don't like Black Hole Sun? It's okay. <laughs> Brian Fan Club Weird all the way. <laughs> I just think, you know, uh, there was a certain optimism in the music in the nine. Like, in Black Hole Sun? No. The, the, there was an optimism. Oh, no, Their not, faces were fucking melting. What Dude, I'm, what do you yeah, mean? I'm, uh, I'm talking about like the late 90s. There was some, op there was optimism in the air, son. There was optimism. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. You was, don't think. Okay. How, don't forget think so. music. You don't think that there was optimism in the, in the late 90s prior to 9-11. <laughs> Didn't they all think they were going to die because the clocks were going to oh, turn? Oh, yeah. That's, that's, true. True. <laughs> that's, the optimism. that's true. What about what about the 1999, the world's going to end, Y2K? You're just arguing to argue, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, do you prefer, Andrew, do you prefer, tell, look straight into that camera. Tell me, you think the world is better now in 2024 than it was in 1999 that's this is a false equivalency so i didn't say that answer the question no answer the question okay so the answer is no i Wait, don't you think the world's better now no i think that the was world better. was better in the 90s yes but that checkmate. had nothing to do with checkmate. blink 182 checkmate <laughs> yeah. it had everything to do with it. <laughs> hey hang on okay now brian my counter did was metallica selling out stadiums in the in the 90s I think so. Yeah, and are they doing it right this second? Yeah. Then the '90s was only good because of Metallica. See, that's that's the, there. You go. Not because of Blink One Eighty Two. Oh, sorry. Let me figure that one out. Yeah, yeah. If we're just gonna make like random correlations, mine's better or better or -er. more better or. -er. <laughs> okay. So okay. is this your guys' Jack Rabbit playlist you guys just went over? Yeah, we never finished asking what everybody's favorite <laughs> music was. And then the and then the premarital sex thing, we didn't finish that either. Oh. Uh, what you yeah. proved to? Yeah. You're like really eager to answer that question or Okay, go ahead. Me? Yeah. Oh, I I just wanted to say I like Jeff Buckley, not that I like have sex to Jeff Buckley, just that I like <laughs> Who the fuck is that guy? You said what Jeff. I get down to, right? No, not that. Oh. Just music I like. Yeah, but the the question was, what music do you like to listen well, to? I can't while answer that because I don't partake. Okay, no, I I get it, but that's. I just wanted to. Say that's why I we were like, like really, you're really eager to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I was eager to answer what kind of music I like. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Don't you think it's sad, Andrew, that you know the you could you could go to a party and you could go listen to. You know, like you'd hear, you'd hear rock music at the party. Are we now you go this? to a party. Now you go to a party. EDM, rap, hip hop. Oh yeah, that's terrible. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's terrible. I'll take Blink One Eighty Two over rap. How's that for a compromise? I'll take yeah, it over rap. No, no, you like no, it. no rap. Uh, no. At all. No. Not a single artist. No. Why? Because it's just gibberish, and I, I Wait, feel. Wait, I'm saying from my Okay, call so I'm going to tell you exactly why I think this. I think it takes zero talent. Almost anybody can do it. I've heard guys on the street who are better than most of the mainstream artists, who just randomly can belt the shit out. Uh, I don't think that it takes. I just, I just don't think that it's good music. I think it's complete trash and garbage. And I think that almost anything anybody can do if they just practiced it for a few weeks, isn't great. Hmm. 
Why do you think it's so popular? Like, why do you think so many people like it? Just in general. It's a psyop. Yeah. Okay. Um, for sure. I, I think that uh, that it's a medium which is above criticism. So it's not it's not heavily criticized. So I think that people can still do what I call storytelling. Same reason I think anime is very popular. I still think that you can do great storytelling through the medium of rap. And that's you know, one of the few music mediums left where you can do that. Just like anime is one of the few mediums left where you can tell a story without it having to be laced with social justice fucking bullshit. So that's why. That's why I think it's popular. Because mm. I think it literally, I think it has masculine themes like smacker in the mouth, right? And shit like that. I'm not, <laughs> the, but I, I mean, honestly, I'm not kidding. Thing. It's one, of, <laughs> it's like, one of the few, that? it's one of the few venues where you can still do storytelling, <laughs> right? Without having some theme of social justice. And when I listen to the rap songs that I hear that become very popular in underground rap communities, that's Scorpio what they're about. Scorpio donated $100 and 69 cents. Let's be real. Slavic women are probably only interested in rich guys, right? If you don't have money, what's the point of even trying? Hmm. Hmm. Well, back to Is the rap. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> well, hang on, I want to finish this. I'm almost done. We're, right. we're almost done. Okay, okay so I feel like there's all different types of artists that can actually tell stories. So when there is like... Rapping is not always about smacking bitches in the face. I was joking. <laughs> but what <laughs> I was what I was saying is that you could actually say that though in rap and be above criticism. Almost no other form of modern music is that possible. And so that's why I think people gravitate towards it. Just like I think that anime should never have been a big thing in America. It's fucking, you know, it's, mm -hmm. when you think about it, it's actually fucking weird <laughs> that anime is such a huge thing in America. But I understand, right? Because I thought, hey, you fucking weebs, I'm not watching that shit. Years ago when I started watching, I was like, wait, these are great stories. <laughs> These are actually good stories because they're not interlaced with a bunch of social justice bullshit. They're trying to tell an actual story, and I think that that's one of the few mediums, rap, where mm -hmm. you can still do that. That's all. Yeah, you can Wait. do it in metal music, too. Anyways. Mm, not as much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not as much anymore. Wait, Andrew, I, I wrote this down. This is going back to the rating thing. Oftentimes, we'll hear beauty is subjective. Yeah. Beauty is subjective. But... <laughs> Whatever fan 69 donated one hundred dollars. Thank you, man. Iron Maiden FTW. Question to panel: Do you think, in general, society women default view men as bad or evil until proven otherwise, and men view women as good, virtuous until proven otherwise? Yeah, there's this phenomenon called the "women are wonderful" effect, and this is for both men and women. There's this bias that women are wonderful, and men are bad yeah so the question to the panel you just do this on a quick show of hands so if you think that uh, men basically are evil until they prove that they're not evil <laughs> can you raise your hand okay hmm. got it all right uh what so about women for you guys uh no no i definitely think that women need to prove that they're not evil until I definitely. Hmm. I've just met so many of them at this point, for sure, one hundred percent. They're all evil. Yeah. Well, you know who tells me that? Women. Yeah. They They're the ones who are like, "Watch out for these bitches." <laughs> <laughs> they, they, I'm serious. They're like, "Watch out for them. They're sneaky. They're backstabbing, conniving." <laughs> yeah, I'm not joking, right? So it's like when people tell you, listen to them, right? And I've never heard anybody run women down more than women. <laughs> No, yeah. literally. Uh, so going to, uh, uh, they'll say beauty is subjective. And then, but then I, I was thinking about this as a counter argument. So uh, it, you can even ask them perhaps a question like, well, do you think in general people will tend to appraise people who are obese as less attractive as people who are fit? And I think even most of the people who say beauty is subjective will have to concede on that one and yeah. say, yes, like th thin people. Uh, by and large, no pun intended, are going to be 
um, appraised as more attractive than obese people. Yeah, but what would be the the counter to the argument of, but there's some cultures where the 500-pound no. women are worshipped as goddesses, Brian. But so then what I, about those cultures, Brian? And that's how you know it's all socially subjective and there's no such thing as symmetry in what people find attractive, Brian. But so then I think the, the checkmate here on this argument, at least for future usage, would be, is obesity subjective? And it's clearly not. Obesity is an objective measurement. How is that an objective? It's literally arbitrary. <laughs> well, I mean, if we say that obesity is you weigh over this much. Yeah, that would be an arbitrary metric, though. What do you mean? Well, I mean, it's literally arbitrary. So we come up with the word obese based on an arbitrary metric, which says if you're over this amount of weight, which we also made up, you're then obese. So it's arbitrary, literally. So then how about just the term fat? Sure. Is that more copacetic? No, nah, it's still arbitrary, though. Still arbitrary? Yeah. Like, whatever system you come up with for fat is going to be a constructed system, right? Isn't it medical, Well, no, but they, they're, like they have, like, they're actually... Like, in, like, you can see it with your eyes, their body fat percentage. Yeah, but this is where you get into the subjective thing, though, right? Because fat can mean anything to anybody. Uh, Green Day was good. Then they started chanting F America because they are pro-abortion. Pro -abortion. Yeah. Motley Crue makes me feel American. Yep. Alice Cooper too. Brian, please add Team America song to, to the soundboard. See, this guy has great taste Thank in you, music. Dylan. Thank yeah, you, I, th Dylan. I think that's the problem, right? Is They would just say, well, to some men, some women who aren't fat, they, can, they consider them fat. And so it's subjective. So I think that you run into that. But I think that the first part's a great argument. You'll never be drafted why hate CCR as a vet and a man who works on the dark side of IT. You'll never have a clue. Stan slash rap got by EM tell an incredible story. Slayer has amazing stories yeah, as Slayer's well. Yeah, Slayer's good. Mm. I'm not, I'm, I probably shouldn't even say that, right? But I, I still like Slayer. Mm. But I think that the first... Uh, the first part of the argument that most people would would be attracted towards a thinner woman, uh, mm -hmm. I think that they'd have to concede on that. But I'm not sure how that moves it out of subjectivity. Wait, so you don't think it's objective? No, I think that there's objective standards. I'm just saying that I, I think that it could be successfully argued it's subjective from the obesity. other side. No, well, obesity especially can be, I mean, that's 100% a subjective standard. I'm going to have to think further about that. There's no way it could be anything but a subjective standard. We come up with the standard so what, for what, what would is be objective as it, as it pertains to... Well, none of that's objective. An, an objective standard would be... There's like almost universal agreement on the intuition. We could say that that's something akin to objectivity. So let me ask you a question. The fattest woman in the world, mm -hmm. you don't think that she is objectively fat? Um, no, that would still be a subjective standard, yeah. But she is the, the fattest woman in the world. Yeah. No woman is has ever been fatter than her. Is there a potential that somebody else could be fatter than her? Sure. Okay, well then, I don't know. It's but still subjective. How about then, well, what if no other woman could be? She's got some sort of medical then condition. Then it would be objective that she's the fattest woman who's ever been in the world, but not objective that... Uh, that the standard which we call fat is objective. No, but is she objectively fat? Yes. By the standard, the arbitrary standard, she would be objectively fat. So the standard's still arbitrary. Bro, I got a headache. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. I'm trying to parse it. Okay, what, how about this? Um, is BMI objective? Well, no, I'm sorry. The standard's not arbitrary because there is a standard. Sorry. Anyway, what's that? BMI? Is BMI objective? Body mass index? Is that an objective? Well, no. Listen, all of these systems that you're talking about, that you're basing it on, are subjective systems. Meaning we constructed them out of what? What did we construct the system? Like, what did we construct inches out of? It's a subjective unit of met uh, metric that we came up with. We just, we made Wait, it up, right? Okay, I'm trying to parse this. So... I have five fingers. Is yep. that objective or subjective? That would be objectively true. Wait. On this hand? On that hand, on yeah. That, hand. that would be Not objectively trouble. true, yeah. 
But so why couldn't the same, this same sort of thing be applied because to... Because there's metaphysical truths and math is a metaphysical truth. So five, five can't ever be anything other than five. But okay, Andrew, But so, an inch, hang, so, on, hang on, hang on. Wait, in hold your, on, wait, wait, in, wait. In, in, in her country, they use kilograms, right? In, sure. Okay, so in here we use pounds, right? Yeah, but they, they could, a certain kilogram could equal a certain poundage. Yeah, right, right. But hang on, but who comes up with those metrics? Well, it's descriptive. Descriptive of an, a, the, a metric that we But it's physics. So you step on a scale and you will weigh this much. Well. <laughs> or you do yeah, weigh that yeah, much. Yeah. In kilograms or in pounds, objectively. You can change the scale. Right. So it's subjective to whatever, the, whatever what? we decide that the weigh note is would be subjective. Huh? So, okay. <laughs> Math is an objective standard. Wait, okay. One plus one must always equal two. That's logically always must be true, right? Yes. But systems and standards, like the scientific method, for instance, mm -hmm. is that objectively true? Mm -hmm. No, it's objectively not true. It's a subjective metric that we came up with. Wait, so if somebody is six feet tall, yeah. is that objective or subjective? I mean tall would be subjective the fact that they're six feet they're mathematically wait they're, wait, they're mathematically wait, 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 x tall, numbers tall wait tall is uh tall is objective subjective wait oh i thought you said tall is objective no tall would be subjective and then six feet also subjective well the metric for what is six feet would be subjective but whatever the numerics which came out to six feet would be objective okay so <laughs> I still don't really get it. Um, wait, so, okay. Uh, if a woman is 500 pounds, yep. is she not objectively But fat? Yeah, okay. So, the, the, what I'm, I'm literally playing the devil's advocate here. So, I want to say, yeah, of course that bitch is fat. But what I'm saying to you is, is that the argument from the opposition is always going to be that's a subjective standard what makes her fat brian well it is also her being 500 pounds is that objective or subjective okay so we could say that that's objective that that this standard of pounds mm -hmm. she weighs this many that is true and is a woman who's 500 yeah but what pounds, but hang on but what makes it look? fat but what makes that fat uh yeah, <laughs> yeah I, no i'm, I'm that's the understand. problem bro no, i'm trying to understand uh we agree we can agree objectively agrees this amount she's this amount that's true this this standard of weight that we came up with she is this amount nobody's going to dispute that they're going to dispute what makes her fat though i'm gonna have to think about this yeah one. <laughs> I yeah. got to think about this. One. That's the problem, bro. Okay. Good talk. Yeah. Good talk. We're going to debate about the, the whole, the, the, the bow perfect woman. We are. We're not the, eh, are we doing later. perfect? If we have time. All right. Maybe on Tuesday, right. actually. Okay. Let me get through the notes. By the way, I just won that debate, Brian. How does I think, that make you, you feel? You know what? How does that make you feel, Brian? <laughs> I, I, I don't know, Andrew. I think, uh, I, I'm not sure you've convinced me, you know, I, uh, <laughs> I remain unconvinced. I, re I remain unconvinced. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Back to the dating talk. Rebecca, you said you one time met an art dealer from Miami on Raya. Mm -hmm. He flew you out with My your mom. golden doodle mm -hmm. on a PJ private jet mm -hmm. for our first date because I couldn't take her on a commercial flight. He told me that he didn't do drugs anymore. Wait, hold on. I got something for that. Wait. I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to too. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Okay. And then, but he snorted Adderall the whole whole weekend because he said it doesn't count. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, that was insane. I was like, I don't know about that one, buddy. But <laughs> yeah. How long ago was this? Um, like six months or so, maybe. He f how much is it? He flew you out on the pri his pri his private jet or no, a like plane? charter, yeah, which is nuts. How much does that cost? I couldn't tell you. Did you I didn't pay for it? Did Did you hit? No, like I actually didn't. 
he was just on Adderall the whole time, so wasn't really. I don't think his mind was there. Did Adderall he... do that much to you? I mean, when he's snorting that much, like to that capacity, you know, I think his like brain was a little scrambled. Did he try to like spastic. give Adderall to the Golden Doodle? Um, not that I know of. I could see him doing that. <laughs> oh, okay, I was yeah. just curious. I wouldn't put it past him, but not that mm. I saw. Mm-hmm. How much does it cost to charter a private jet? No, we could it's probably a few grand. It up. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah, I thought so as well. But I have you been flown out before? On a private jet? No, by yes. just it could, it could have been fucking spirit. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. How many times? I don't know. Like I would say less than ten in my life, probably. Have you ever been flown out by a guy? Uh, once. Into oh, sorry. Night. Once. Once. No. Private. Just oh, any yeah. airplane. Yeah. yeah, of course. In private. No. Place. Three times. A guy's flown you. Okay. I've flown people. Okay. Okay, girl. As you Get it. Lisa, any offer? Any flown flowns out? <laughs> Have you been offered though? Um, I guess by my boyfriend. W Nisa. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. You said. Um, what constitutes cheating, liking girls photo, or texting a girl flirtatiously is definitely cheating in your opinion. Uh, when should you become monogamous with someone before le- before leaving because it's been too long? Yeah, like uh, some girls don't want to wait. Do you know what I mean? They're like, oh, if he doesn't want to commit after three months, then you should leave. I know that's the thing that I see online a lot, but okay, that's what I meant by that. Mm. Hmm. Uh, you also said having a girl best friend if it's a guy. Oh, okay. Um, is an open relationship actually cheating? That's what you... Mm. Probably not. If you, I don't think so. If you agreed to it. Um, let's see. Should you ever get back? No. Uh, do all men cheat? That's what you were asking. Because mm. that is like a stigma. I feel, I feel like a lot of people just assume. Like I know girls personally that will say like every man's going to cheat. So they just kind of accept that it's going to mm. happen in a relationship. I don't think I don't think Which all I don't think cheat. is right. No, I don't either. But I feel like that is something I hear a lot. Uh, men saying they'd never date a stripper or OnlyFans girl. But then y'all find out Hannah, who's a receptionist, <laughs> fucked your dad, even though she isn't a sex worker. <laughs> The generalizations are so out. I don't get it. Wait. Saying that like. Never like, date a stripper or OF girl, but you know, yeah. Saying that those people are more promiscuous than just a normal everyday person because of their job, basically. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. Well, so you're saying like men will. You're saying normal women can be more promiscuous than sex workers? Yeah, Is that the I argument? Think so. Yeah. Like a slut for a whore. Say it again. Like a slut for a whore. Right, Is there? Wait, what do you mean? You like, mean well, no, I think so. You mean like, like you're not getting paid, but you're just as like. Yeah, you know, yeah. You're just sending nudes to guys free. Right, you know, which could happen. You know, I think there there are people like that out there. Wait, so, but okay, so I mean, clearly it's the case that women who are not sex workers can be bigger sluts <laughs> than sex workers. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's the only reason men don't want to date sex workers, though, is because of either real or perceived promiscuity. Um, Could just be that there's a stigma attached to the profession. Mm. You disagree or? No, I mean, I think that like, I'm not talking about men wanting to date them. I'm just saying the assumption that they're more promiscuous because of their job. That's all. Are they not? I mean, I don't think so. Like, do y'all you think they're more promiscuous because they're sex workers? I think no? you have to be like a base level of promiscuous to do those things. But I don't think it would necessarily mean that you. Okay, let me all hear. Why don't I ask this? Do you think sex workers are more promiscuous than the general population? I don't know because I feel like a lot of them do it out of necessity or maybe again out of a, fi- a financial bind you know do some so women like, how come do- if they did it out of necessity that would make them less promiscuous wouldn't that make them more promiscuous no. like aren't some women grown. if you were wait if you're a of- prostitute out of necessity yeah. how are you less promiscuous that makes no sense because you don't I feel like if you're promiscuous maybe it means like you enjoy it you know what I don't know mm-hmm. promiscuous yeah. just right. means you take a lot of D I guess I don't know. No, the, what do we? No, yeah. no, no, no. There's no guess, yeah. right? 
what the hell does promiscuous mean if not sex with lots of people? What I mean, what else could that possibly mean to to make I think it, it make means sense? Like, it's like a mentality. It's like willing sex with a lot of people, and when and when it's like more yes, obsessive. willing sex with a lot of people. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. But I think one's just more so if you're a prostitute, based. you're having willing sex. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But I think like again, it's kind of out of necessity too, because so, you wouldn't be doing that if you were financially. Well, stable. first of all, when you say necessary, mm -hmm. right? What the hell does that mean? To because money, there's know. lots of men who necessarily work three jobs and don't have the luxury of prostituting themselves. They could if they want. No, to who? <laughs> Other men? I mean, there's there's websites probably. Yeah, no, they're there's not going to make... Do you think that male prostitutes on average are going to make as much as female prostitutes? Some do. So it depends on the male, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. What did I say? On average. Um, yeah, on average now. No, of mm -hmm. course not. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It, I mean, it's literally ridiculous. So they don't... When you say necessary, mm -hmm. how come when poor men... Uh, are broke mm -hmm. that suddenly it they can somehow find jobs to get by which aren't opening their legs to random well, strangers they they wouldn't make as much right, right. so it's not know, necessary like, then it's yeah. not necessary but I guess they also don't have the ability because they know they wouldn't make as much but yeah women but that, know, hey, that then, then it's not necessary quick. necessary <laughs> means must right mm -hmm. well it's necessary for them to make money and they know they could do it they can know it's not necessary for them to make money well to live. if you have a dead no it's not necessary for them to live you're saying you're saying I make more money. I that's want, not necessary. Well, I'm saying faster as well. Like it is like quick money. Then you know? still not necessary. Necessary, I think, means must. Mm -hmm. right? So it's not necessary to make money ever, or just have. No, I didn't say it's not necessary to make money. I just said that there's alternative means of making money other than prostitution that may make you less. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that it's necessary that you make as much as you make as a prostitute yeah. to live. I think they just think that it would be faster. I think yeah. that I agree that it would be faster. Mm -hmm. But how is that not willingly having more sexual partners? Well, it is willingly having more partners, but it's for, you know, a bigger purpose. I guess. That's promiscuity. Promiscuity is your willingness to have lots of sexual partners. I guess. I don't know. I don't know how it could. What else I mean, could like, it be? No, I'm, I'm not like disagreeing with you. I hear what you're saying for sure. I really don't understand the, yeah. what you're saying. I don't really She's know like, how it could I be anything yeah. other than mm -hmm. willingly <laughs> having lots of sex. That's promiscuity. I think, well, I think you're just saying OF and uh, strippers, right? You're not talking about prostitution. Well, an OF, boy, girl content, very common. Yeah. Yeah. But... And also, is. I would say that, so I would say this as well, that um, if you were a woman who was talking to multiple people, flirting with them, right, things like this, mm -hmm. uh, that men would consider that to also be cheating. I don't disagree with that, yeah. I so, think it goes both ways, for sure. So even if we were to take this, like, very kind of charitable idea of promiscuity, which is, well, it doesn't require sex, it's like, okay, I can even concede that. And I still think they would be more promiscuous, right? Do you think there's a gender that cheats more generally, like men or women? I think women cheat more. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. I do. Why? Yep. Why do you think that is? Um, because I think that the availability is there far more for them than it is men. I think that men get caught more. Why is that? Why do men get caught more? Just because I think that they kind of don't understand subtle manipulation as well as as women do. Mm -hmm. Uh, for for women, practicing gentlemen donated one hundred dollars oh for the panel. Does fisting count as cheating? How many knuckles deep can you go before it's cheating? <laughs> also, Pink Floyd, Hootie and the Blowfish, Demon Hunter, Red Santana, Wax Taylor, and He's Yes Creed. Okay. All right, all right. Yeah. hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, so yes, so very quickly, guys, before we so we can get back to the conversation. <laughs> Show of hands is. Does fisting count as cheating? Yes. yes. Show of hands. Yes. It doesn't? It, wait, what? <laughs> she was the one to center? Okay. Uh, yes, so it does. It does indeed. Okay, and I would just, just laugh, though. Like, is there any? Serious. It doesn't require more than one knuckle. One knuckle is still One knuckle. Cheating. Is one knuckle cheating? Yes. Yes. Show of hands if one knuckle's cheating. The, the thoughts Okay. Will <laughs> <be>. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so one knuckle's cheating. Fair enough. Uh, anyway, so yeah, back back to this. Um, I think on the idea uh, that men get caught. So I think that we're just talking about basic power dynamics. And it comes back to power theory. I think that men are very used to being able to utilize force, and women are not. So um, men always always can kind of rely on going back to force. So 
because women don't do this, they understand kind of subtle manipulation better, generally, I think, than men do. I'm not so saying... like adaptive a little bit just because they can't... Is that what you're saying? Yeah, well, a woman can't at any time they want physically dominate a male. Men can do this for most women, and they can also do this to other men. So because that's true, they always have that to rely on, right? Where it's like, oh, it doesn't have to make sense because I'm going to punch you in the mouth, right? So women don't, women don't have that. They can use emotional control, manipulation, things like this. So I think that they're much more clever when it comes to hiding their tracks or carrying on affairs than men generally are. Interesting. Hmm. So now the stats would actually disagree with me. The stats would say that men cheat more. Uh, but how do you get the stats? Well, you get the stats by the admittance of people saying that they cheat or don't cheat. And people who are really good at cheating would never admit it. <laughs> and so I think that women, uh, they don't admit it because they're better at cheating. But that's, that's my take on it. That's so, fine. yeah. Most of my clients, males, who come into me, um, I would say probably 8 out of 10. The reason for their divorce is because wife cheated on them. Um. So it is. Well, think about, think about it like this. Um, think of it like a superpower that women have. And they have it, especially when they're younger and when they're in their 20s, right? So you can imagine from the male perspective, uh, if they kind of analyze this and they're like, you can just get whatever the fuck you want because you're pretty. Yeah, I really can, right? Well, that's an amazing superpower. And that's why you see as that fades, when women get older, they become more and more delusional. They're like, wait a second, I must do everything to maintain this superpower. That's where you get the fake boobs, the tummy tucks, the, the, everything to create the appearance of youthfulness and attractiveness because that keeps the kind of superpower going for longer. Men never have it. They never have the superpower. So if I were to reverse it and I thought to myself, well, what would happen if when you're in your early 20s, every woman just want, would be willing to sleep with you, basically, right? Well, I think that that would corrupt men really badly. You know what I mean? And I think it kind of has in society because it kind of has happened. It hasn't really happened. Easily. Well, in college. I'm like, it hasn't happened in college. Most men, so women. Oh, oh, there are a lot of men I'll prove though, it who to can you. get it very I'll easily. I'll prove it to you, right? The easiest way possible. So let's, let's assume it was young picture Andrew and you, okay? And we both went out on the sign of, uh, right on the street of Santa Barbara right now. And both of us held a sign. I held a sign that said, I'm willing to sleep okay, well, with any woman right now. <laughs> and you held up a sign saying, I'm willing to sleep with any man right this second. Who's getting picked up first? Okay, I mean, probably me, but if we both... Why? Okay, it, hang, it, on, it, hang on, okay. hang on, hang okay. on. <laughs> really? But why? Because I feel like women would see you with a sign and be like, ew. <laughs> but... Um, exactly. <laughs> but if we both went to a frat party, mm -hmm. I bet you would easily go home with a girl that night. And Easier I actually, than you? Yeah, probably. Why? I I feel like it would be very easy. I I don't know. I mean, you feel if like you wanted it? to. I I. So if you walked into a frat party and you said gang bang upstairs and I'm and I'm the meat between the sandwich, okay. you're not going upstairs or what? Okay, fine. I guess if we were both were trying to. Yeah. 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 So th but, that's what I mean, though, is that the the corruptibility. But I feel like this is the thing: is like men will go to the frat parties wanting to get laid mm -hmm. and women might you know be like oh we'll see who i'll meet but yeah, it's well, not but they're not necessarily like well some are, i but agree i'm just talking I mean? about the potential of could yeah could i'm just yeah. talking about the potential of could yeah. so then i agree with you <laughs> could every woman here sleep with any given man easier than i can sleep with any given woman yes yes mm -hmm. and since the answer to that is yes i view this as like a female superpower because essentially you can get whatever the fuck you want <laughs> based on this and the younger and more attractive you are the more you can employ this superpower right do i think that that's very corruptible i do because mm -hmm. i think what if men could do this and women would be willing to do this i think it would corrupt the shit out of men too mm -hmm. so yeah. i just i just think of it in those terms right yeah i do agree with you on that yeah you know, you could, if you want you can just stay you know <laughs> You could just stay, bro. You could just stay. You're leaving? She's leaving. How ridiculous what is that? What the f***? What?
what? Sit, sit. You got to go. You got 30 sit minutes. 30, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. That's 30 minutes. nothing. It's, it's fine. Oh, 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 I, I, I got to go out to the club. Oh. You're out to the club till oh 11. I was really the club. Actually, oh. I have a disappointment tomorrow, too, and I have to go to work. And my boyfriend is outside. Oh. oh. So well, it's kind of, I didn't think it was going to last this long. That's what she said. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this is the longest podcast I've ever It's the longest And it's podcast. the one you've had the most amount of fun on. It's the most fun it's podcast. Fun. It's it was pretty like the fun. Topics. You've been yeah, on the podcast before. Girls. She's been on the podcast yeah. before. I don't know about that. Okay, let me get through all the notes. I got to get through the notes. We're almost done on the notes. Then we'll do a roast session. Then and we'll then wrap. We're done. But oh. I do we're have done. To, then we're done. But I do have to do the roast because I promised I would do a roast. So I wrote these down. Actually, I didn't write these down. I'm just going to go into it. Okay, so you guys are what happens when women drink during pregnancy. <laughs> 69 donated 69 dollars I got more. and 69 Yeah, let me do my roast. Baby Andrew kiddo, instead of debating, that's the only thing you are good at is debating against 304s. But you are poor, poor 69, 69, 69, 69. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know, Ava, you have such a beautiful face. But let's put a bag over that personality. Uh, Sorry, was that I bad? Like That's like you roasted yourself. <laughs> was that bad? That was terrible. That, that was like a dad joke. <laughs> you have so, no kids and you did a dad for joke. For you, for you, okay. There's someone out there. Let's do split. Wait, uh, for you, there's someone out there for everyone. For you, it's a therapist. <laughs> Those don't even work either. <laughs> and all of you women here, I can't wait to spend my whole life without you. <laughs> <laughs> but we're the ones who brought Theo today and uh, 69. Come on. <laughs> now our manifesting friend over here, whoever told you to be yourself, Gave you bad advice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for you over here with the stomach tattoo, you know, how she just like fix her posture. There. She's like, oh shit, talking about it. what? Uh, you are the reason why there are instructions on shampoo bottles. <laughs> yeah. She says, yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not the sharpest tool in the book. For you, guy. who's about to You're not the sharpest tool in the duh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's right. the point. Yeah, fair enough. It's a lot of confidence for somebody whose whole personality can be deleted with a baby wipe. Whoa. Oh! Whoa. 69 donated $69.69. And I look good with no Andrew, makeup, you actually. offer the debate against me, but I offer you to show your balance and source of income. I do the same, but I think your source of income is debating against 304s only. So mm. calm down, fatty. <laughs> What's a 304? Yeah. We, us. Three what does that mean? We're a three or a four. Oh, okay. Well, okay, well, well here, here's, my, here's, my, here's my entire net worth. I think I, I recently got a savings account. It's worth maybe a couple thousand bucks. I'm pretty proud of that. Pretty proud. By forty, couple thousand bucks in the savings account. Yeah. I think. I'm with you. I th I think I'm doing pretty good. You f jerk. You know, Brian. <laughs> don't you think that's pretty? Uh, that's okay, right? You're doing good. Yeah, I'm doing good. You're doing good. What a f hole this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Uh, good. Yeah, a couple thousand's good. Sure. So, what? Who do I direct this to? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Oksana, you sure? <laughs> sure? Also, no. the guy just called himself a 304. Damn, what an idiot. Right. I, d I asked him to debate, and he said, money. you only Come debate on. 304s. <laughs> so he's a dumb I fuck. have seen better looking lady boys than the women at this table. Oh. Sorry, that was bad. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? You've seen better? Better looking lady boys. <laughs> that just made okay. you sound terrible. You've seen a lot of lady boys? So you lady boys. <laughs> Lady boys. <laughs> donated $69.69. Honestly, it's I think funny that you are you. trying Lady to boys. roast me, but literally only thing you can roast is 304s with bad responses. Oh, she doesn't like surgery. Yeah, like, he likes Lady boys. Okay, here, I have a roast. Like Eva. <laughs> <laughs> Ava? Is it Eva or Eva or Ava? <laughs> How do you say your name? <laughs> if unenthusiastic handjob had a face... <laughs> I actually like that. <laughs> 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 oh. Whatever 
whoever gets the job. Okay, that was brutal. Okay, that was good. You know, I, I, um. Did you look that one up? <laughs> There's no way you came they up said with that, that about from Jennifer Lady Lawrence Boy. before. I Wait, so all these jokes you looked them up? You didn't make these up? So, uh, April, April. <laughs> What's it yeah. like being the least popular girl at the orgy? <laughs> oh, she's <laughs> just... <laughs> Did you want me to answer that? <laughs> no, he has earned the money. Uh, she has an answer <laughs> for it. <laughs> <laughs> to our, our Russian, maybe you can translate for our Russian friend over sure, here. From Ka yeah, Kazakhstan. Uh, you look like the type of person to eat popcorn with a spoon. Ты выглядишь как 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 женщина, которая будет кушать попкорн с с ложкой. Миллионер Бакчила донатил 69 долларов. 69 stop pretending you're me. Don't get me into this. To you, fucking brokey. Yeah, send in 10k, then we'll believe you. You look like you can't swim, Brian. Wow, that's brutal. <laughs> now, you, is it millionaire bachelor who donated like three thousand uh, dollars? I got one for you. Yeah? No, 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 no. Never give that guy credit for things he didn't do. That's not him. Yeah, no, no. Oh, it was Theo. No, no. It this, was Theo. This guy. Um, Theo. Yeah, this guy who's sending it in under this like pseudonym or yeah. whatever, right? He's just some broke slumlord. Okay. Yeah. But Theo is the one who donated yeah. three thousand. Yeah. Yeah. He's like so, just some brokey. So for you. Uh, you look like you have a failed ASMR channel on YouTube. <laughs> That's not that bad. I don't know. Not bad. Okay, I got one for you. Anybody that you should be able to write it off on their taxes as a charitable contribution. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Which website are these from? That's yeah, you talk? I don't know. Yeah, hey, Ava, if unseasoned chicken could be a person. Unseasoned <laughs> <laughs> my chicken. <laughs> I feel hey, like you. it's you. You look like unseasoned hey, chicken hey, boy. <laughs> oh, she's in the back. Oh, she's in the back. She's in the back. I need to get her out of here. But go ahead. Um, let's see. Okay. You look like a uh, bro from uh, The Hangover, but like a more. <laughs> Up version. And you look like your nose is bigger than your the, dick. You look oh, like uh, your nose is bigger than I your dick. The, bro. <laughs> oh, the real people. What the? Why the fuck? I need to get the fuck out. Sixty-nine is a broke normal. Lay him out. He's not the only one in chat with money. Stop yeah, flexing. All right, I need another champagne bottle. Oh. One more. Crazy. Wild from the back. You guys are in tap me out here. Uh, yo, this guy is a... He's a brave and a decent man. He's a, a pioneer. pioneer. He's a pioneer. Uh, look, um, <laughs> let's see. Um, yeah. You know what, Ava? You look okay, like you how know. boiled chicken tastes. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the <laughs> Sorry. What's about Bye the guys. chicken? Uh, oh, but you just Ariel look like out. boiled chicken. I gotta go. <laughs> Wait, last thing. Last go. thing. Um, y you look like you have resting whore face. <laughs> okay, hang on. I got a brutal one for you on the way out. Brutal. It's on the brutal. On the way out. You know how I know you don't wear panties? How? What the f Oh, you're going to say some shit. I already know what the hell you're going to say. What Go. am I going to say? What the f Like something Luke's about the smelling or something? Donated no. Oh, then what are you going to say? Brian and Andrew do the weed and for AIs. 100 joke, billion right? in donations for Brian. You guys need to lose weight, though. No. Huh? Uh oh, is this gonna be a. Oh no. Oh no. Oh wait. You got it. Is it? Is it? Oh. Is it? Oh, there we go. That's a good one. <laughs> um, Andrew, you wanna just chug that? Alright, one chug. for you, one for me. <laughs> what? We're doing this. Good. Oh, yeah. You're gonna you chug, chug it? Chug. Am I gonna chug it? Yeah. Come on, club girl. You you. <laughs> you Let's Your do boyfriend's it. driving back, right? I know, but... Here. Here. Hey, drinking with drink? another man is disrespectful. Oh. Yeah! Oh. Hell yeah. yeah! Isn't that a dunk that on a her? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so how are you laughing? She dunked on you, no, dummy. She's like, drink another man. She it's said drinking with another me. man me from having to drink. Drink. Well, that well would for be you two, you. you're drinking with another lady. You know, this isn't the bar with your boys. 
Think about it. You're the I thought she was saving me from not having it. It's public. It's yeah, public. I'm sorry. I, I didn't understand it. It's public. <laughs> my bad. I didn't. I didn't realize. I guess we'll have to do a cheer. My uh, no to cheers to the no <laughs> the real cheers to the real P Diddy. <laughs> With it. <laughs> Alright, cheers. It's controversial. You got this perfectly That's good bottle on. It's just ridiculous. Wait. Get both in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Vector, Victor thank you. Victor donated seventy dollars and sixty This is crazy. I'm Rome wasn't built in a day. It was most likely oh, yeah, 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 much you like this one. <laughs> Rome wasn't the built in a day. Was most likely right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Or between her and you too. Let it, let it, it's a beat between herself. Let it build. Let it build. Let it what let, build? You gotta let it build. You gotta let the joke build. Oh my God! Say it. Let it build. I could. I could. But you're gonna have to stay until I do. Otherwise, it'll drive you. Crazy. It's bothering me. I know. <laughs> I got a roast for you, April. Of course. You ready? Let me have it. It looks like someone microwaved a Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <Damn. laughs> <laughs> All right, tell me the joke. Look at you. you can't even control yourself. <laughs> control yourself. I can't. Sorry, sorry. And for all you, well, she's dying. She's dying. <laughs> okay, I'm okay. This is like that clip that went viral of you, that girl that rated herself a 6.5, and then you just dying. died laughing. I couldn't help it. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay, but this. Wait, I got one more for you. Okay, we're almost done. We're almost done. Uh, Oh my God, I'm so messed up. Hi. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, uh, for those of you who are, uh, you guys learned what the. F <laughs> what? What? They're this one. Real smart. Oh, uh, okay. I got it now. Yeah, real smart. Very. Intelligent. They learned long ago that the amount of time people can tolerate them is directly proportional to the amount of cleavage visible. <laughs> what? Okay, that was bad. That went over my head. <laughs> Because titties. Uh, <laughs> all right. Nice. <clears throat> it's because okay. it keeps the bugs off the Indian food at the picnic. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Did you, did you come up with that like right it's now? All the. <laughs> right now. Did you know the punchline when you originally said it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we so kept calling me native. So well, if you were right. going to go, if you were okay. going to go, that's the way to go out. It was, I'm, I'm, I'm it was a pleasure to meet you. Me. Have a good one. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank home. you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Thank you for coming. <laughs> uh, you know, and I, you know, as she's leaving, I do want to say I am tired of seeing all these beautiful women on the whatever podcast. So I want to thank the panel tonight for changing that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's coming back. She's coming back. <laughs> That's a rage quit. That's a rage quit. Rage quit. Rage quit. Rage quit. Rage quit. Uh, That's going to be in the title. Rage quit. Rage quit. You're so drunk. I wish. <laughs> Who? Andrew? Yeah, you can hear it in his voice. Oh, okay. Like slurring a bit. Um, and then so uh, what was I saying? What I mean, was? Anything to oh, what was? Oh, Ava, can you take that seat? And then uh, Nisa, you'll take uh, Ava's seat. And then maybe we can get some then, more room here. And so. and then so where were we? I totally I'm kind of forgetting. You're gonna get to the rose section. Oh, the roasts. There's a bit more notes though. It's been a rage. Here, I'm, here's what I'm gonna roasting. do. Uh, here, what, let me get through the notes. We'll do a brief roast session, and then we will wrap the show. We're gonna wrap after we do the roast. I gotta get through the rest of the notes. Okay. So maybe somebody will donate another three thousand dollars. <laughs> oh boy. Or ten. Oh. Boy. Or ten. The Russians. Yeah. I actually, you know, if there is actually single guys out there, mm. I will donate the love tour in, oh. that we have. Yeah. If somebody mm. will do another three thousand oh. dollars. Wait. Yeah? If someone does another three thousand, what? They get a free I, love. They get yeah. to join the love. Tour. They will join the love tour. I, I will provide Wait, even how accommodations. Much is a love tour? It's a you know around five thousand dollars, depending on the type of membership, but yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> They well, will even the stay expensive? at the love villa, the so love they will have the their love villa. Yeah, we'll have forty bedrooms. Love you know, so no, it's. Sir. 
The love tour is a little old place where we can get together. Love tour. Love tour. Yeah. They're coming there you and coming that. out totally like want. happy oh, Andrew, people. Andrew. With a special out. someone. Andrew needs a ciggy. He needs a cigarette. Okay, April. You do construction accounting. You're no uh well, I don't know why I'm uh divorced twice. You said you asked me if this is a safe space to reveal that you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You okay? <laughs> no, it's just really funny. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I am toxic. Tell us, tell us about it. And I was trying, you were asking for a whole story, but it's like way too much. No to safe type space out. on the internet. No safe space at all. Um, I was just going to say how I got proposed to was um, he had put in a car in my name and he, it wasn't parked at his house. Um, three cities over, I found it. And so I called AAA and had um, the guy tow it. And he knew the whole time that he was not safe. And he's like, is someone going to come out and shoot me? And I said, yes, if you don't hurry up, get this car out of here. So I had him tow it all the way to three cities over. And the guy woke up and thought that his car was stolen. And he thought that I was completely crazy and then proposed to me. So Damn. that's how that one <laughs> happened. Wait, what? I stole his car <laughs> and had it towed three cities over. I s oh. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so what did he do like before that to make you mad? Or you just did it like, to mess with him? Well, he had a sugar mama before oh, I met him. Damn. And he was supposed to cut all that stuff off. Mm. And so she had bought him a car, and but they put it in my name. Oh. Do you see what I'm damn, saying? I and so yeah. I called AAA and said, hey, my car, I, I locked the keys in it, and uh, I need help. But I was out there like pacing, like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And so basically oh, I stole his wait, car. Wait, I'm sorry, I have one more roast. Now Roast that it. Anissa's joined the table. Uh, Anissa, <laughs> you make... Oh, my... Am I going to get canceled? This is the roast section, guys. Uh, uh, wait. <coughs> Anissa, you make China want to go back to the one-child policy. <laughs> oh. Sorry, was that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I was waiting for an Asian person at the table for that one. Okay, my bad. <laughs> uh, sorry. Are you enjoying this part of your work, Brian? What do you mean? <laughs> Roasting girls. For I mean, money. they asked for it. I never yeah, did. yeah, but are you enjoying this fact? It looks roasting? like it's yes. sparking joy. It's like I'm not arguing with you guys. I'm just <laughs> talking shit. You know? It's great. You're like the Grinch. Wait, what? I said you're like the Grinch. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's true. Uh, good talk. Wait, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there with your story if you want to. Or there was another story, right? Into the mic. Oh, no, we're good. I just basically stole his car, had it stole moved, car. and yeah, uh, right. he thought it was crazy, and then he I proposed to me. We got to propose down. a lot of that. <laughs> That but wasn't it your car? Wild. No, it was his car. His sugar mama bought it for him. Wait, you got to get His sugar the, mama bought it for mic. him when I had first met him. Right. And he was supposed to, like, cut all that off. when. Sure. He, yeah. And I went to his house and his no, car No, but it's in there. your name, though. That's not my car. Like, they bought it. They put it in my name because they couldn't legally put it in their name. <laughs> Does that make sense? No. Damn. Wait. Hmm. Okay. How long after that did he propose? Was it like immediate? Yes. Like, oh. Like I broke up with him after that. And, um, uh, go ahead. Wait, I, I, I'm sorry. I have a question. Yes. About the kids. You got four kids, right? Yes. Wait, four kids. Four kids. Four kids. Oh. Uh -huh. Hold on. Victor donated $70.68. I will say this again as I was so rudely interrupted by Lolly Gaggery. Rome wasn't built in a day. It was most likely built during an evening quite like this one. Yeah. With alcohol? And fake titties? Yeah, I was just going to say fake boobs. Yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> That's great minds think there. alike. Yep. <laughs> uh, you have four kids. <laughs> yes. Four different fathers. Yes. May I ask, do you have a type? Absolutely. Big black beep. <laughs> yes. Black man. Absolutely. Desmond. No. 
Hulk. Hey, Desmond. Uh, He's not my type. Wait, His pants are too tight. Wait, Desmond. <laughs> Desmond, just come over here, bro. Just come over Roasted. on that side. Put the security jacket on. Come over, bro. You're getting on camera Do you, today. How old are your kids? This is your, cam this is your on my camera. My oldest day. is 16. And you're going to pound them. Do you talk to all of them? All good? Uh, my kids? Oh, I didn't know oh. if they live with you or not. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm 100% mom. So... Bro, did you ha are This is Desmond's are reveal. Like Desmond's reveal. <laughs> okay. You're wearing jeans. Desmond, are you down to pound this ball of champagne? No. On stream? <laughs> oh, you don't drink? Okay, he's eating his bland chicken back there. Is it seasoned? I don't think so. I don't think he seasons his chicken. This guy's hard. He raw dogs chicken. You're a horrible Whoa, person. Absolutely. What sort of horrible? All right, get in here, Desmond. Get in here. <laughs> Yeah, over there. No, 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 over there. Over there, over there. All right, look at her. She's getting all, she, ooh, getting a little hot and bothered over here. Yeah, calm down. Jeez. <laughs> ooh, uh. <laughs> hey, W, W Desmond reveal. Um, I can get you guys acquainted. I just said his pants are too tight for me. Okay, all right. His pants are too tight for me. Sorry, Desmond, you little, you little hipster you with your tight pants. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right, so... Dude, this is a good time to reveal he's voting for Kamala Harris. He's an absolute <laughs> traitor. He's 100% a traitor. Voting for Kamala, I've tried to talk him out of it 300 times. Yes. No argument that I make is worth it. Desmond, don't walk away from me, Desmond. You're, You're voting fired. for it and you know it. What are you doing, Desmond? <laughs> Wait, Desmond's voting for... He it's Gamala Harris. Oh, no. You did this, You're Brian. Fired. You're, fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> You're fired. Wait, and so so all four of your kids are, they're interracial. They Chat are. better just they spam are. this shit with L. Desmond for that. Kamala. L. Desmond. L. Desmond Lesmond. for that one. No, L it better just be L. It better just be L. He said W. It's an L. In the chat. Um, let me see the notes here. I think we've got we've got most of it. Let's see here what we have. We've done Rebecca. We've done Nikki. We've done we've done all of you. Yeah. What That's we fantastic. haven't done is the rose section. We that we're going to do it right now. So we chat. Gotta have, we gotta have the in and out. Mm, yes, indeed, indeed. Okay, guys. TTS is twenty. We're gonna do a brief rose session. So we're gonna load the TTS to. Uh, 20 it's been changed you're free if you guys want uh and then we'll wrap the show any final thoughts from any of the panelists here speak now forever hold your thanks for having me i'm grateful to have been here thank you for coming much appreciated but thank you hang on mm -hmm. can you just very quickly look right into the camera and talk about how you were held hostage maybe among a donated 20 dollars <laughs> In regard to the bear question, Brian's girlfriend would definitely choose the bear because the bear might actually eat her. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do that. I don't do that. If you walk past a store and manifest uh, some food without using your wallet, you may be getting more than you bargained for. You might manifest a cop. Handcuffs and a billy club named Kiki. Hang on here. Can pause it for a second. Yeah, Chinese motherfucker donated twenty dollars. What the fuck? <laughs> Who was that? Tamer Gustavo Charlie Sheen looking as in the back. Brian, priest, tell me you didn't eat Maddie. Bad, bad Brian. Wait, Release gonna, her from on, your really? dumpy at once. Wait, hold on. Wait, I'm gonna here. Hold on. Chinese motherfucker donated 20 million. What the fake? Who was that? Him or Gustavo Charlie Sheen looking as in the back? Brian, the please tell me you didn't hit a Maddie. Bad, bad Brian. Release her from your donkey at once. <laughs> By the way, this guy, he's like, now we know why your pants are too tight back there, Mr. Security Guard. That's what he said. That's what he said, bro. All right, all right, hang on. So you got to look at the camera and talk about how you were endlessly tortured by the whatever podcast. So what I need you, what I need what? to hear is you never got any water, <laughs> he, no food available whatsoever, and that we were super mean. That's all I want you to do right there in the camera. These guys are horrible people. I was held captive for hours without food or water. There should be a lawsuit out on these guys. Mm. 
evil. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. You Tell know, us there, how you really feel. There were some brownies. There were some very nice, delicious brownies back there. That I, they were bur burrito well, brownies. But she made them. She, she made, made them. the brownies. She made yeah, the brownies. Yeah, exactly they look delicious, I, yeah. admit, I must admit. I had, just, I had both kinds. The white kind and the black. She can ship them to so you. Any take, so, you take, so you take both. <laughs> there were two. The but color. The name of there was, was like going a on white around. brownie and a black brownie. I went for the black. Or are they called blacky? <laughs> Whoa! What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god! Did I just yes. say that? He just said it. <laughs> she just said it. That's cool. That's a good good. Okay, I'm gonna let the wait. Was there, did you wanted to keep it paused or are we good to? We're good. To, okay. I thought you had more. Well, I, well okay. Well, oh, no, on. my God. <laughs> just one more thing. Oh cents. I'll let this one. You effing dip cheat. I love you both, but where is 69? <laughs> <laughs> where is 69? Can you also look into the camera and tell the viewers how you were endlessly tortured this yes. evening? Okay, go ahead. Which camera? Whichever one. I don't know if there's one like facing me. Yeah, for some reason, I feel, just grab the, grab the, you know? Guys, I've been trapped in here for 10 hours. No food, no water. <laughs> Every time I try to get up, I'm chained to my chair. I have not been able to leave and please, please fucking help me. <laughs> <laughs> what's that? I don't know if this is insensitive. <laughs> but like, what's that hand symbol you're supposed to do if like, you know, the... This. Oh, That's like for health. Yeah. 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 Do you want it? Okay, never mind. I don't know what it is. Mean. Maybe I'm being insensitive. Or even being monitored going to the bathroom, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's just the cameras, though. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I will let the rest come through. <laughs> Daryl underscore Frank Castle 512 donated oh, twenty dollars. I guess April didn't hear about the stereotype after the first three baby daddies when she wrote the be a single mom. Clearly I don't listen to shit. I you know it's it's interesting, April. So four four black yes. baby daddies. Uh, yeah. Four and each one wait, one kid. Wait, really? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And then Desmond. No, his pants are too damn tight. We're calling him. His, tan, his, his pants are too tight now. <laughs> she probably has a problem too. Oh no! <laughs> I don't wear. Oh any. shit! Blawfest calling out Desmond's pants when she l looks like the kind of blank star who only comes when the guy delivers the pizza, pizza to the store. door. For us. <laughs> damn. The Rosetta Stone donated twenty dollars. Dobry Betcher. Brian, we all know right said Fred, I'm too sexy is your favorite tune. Would like to have them all on a plane with me. Plenty of flotation in case the plane goes down over water. <laughs> Mr. Dude donated $20. Oh. Chair one in the orange. On a scale from one to ten, how bad does Eva, girl to your right, smell? But smell me. Is one the worst? You can smell her if you. Is one the worst or the best? Worst. Worst. A ten. She smells great. Oh, mm, yeah. That's, that's great. I mean it. GMD Jim donated okay, yo, $20. Jim, Not even a three. three. I know no. most women get it from age no. gap relationships. What does the panel think of a woman of 29 getting into a relationship with a 60-year-old married man for carrier advancement? Kamala. What? Who's and a Kamala? Devil donated $20.24. And this is hotter than a German oven. Oh my Boom god. Boom roasted. Bro. Oh dude, come on. Bro. You gotta keep it keep it within the confines, come on. Nobody here's offended, but Justin keep it Martin's the donated twenty dollars. Oh, Brian, no. your music taste is objectively <laughs> awful. Oh, the no. standard in which this is measured is subjective. <laughs> Hope this helps. Also Metallica. Metallica, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Fuck bleep. Funk bleep one eighty three donated twenty dollars. <laughs> Seek Tate is by far the most attractive woman that has been on this show. Six, it should be eight. illegal to be that good looking. Wait, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I win. Oh, oh, Alexander. Nice. Oh, Lindsay, you got some uh, you got some fans okay, there. But how do we get the trailer out of you? Hey, can we open the door? It's that's trailer. the that's the question. No, I'm what's kidding. The, no, what's the trailer? Does it look like there, trailer trash? Yes, there's an ongoing joke. Terminal yes. underscore me? Yes. Yes. What is it? That Eva has the personality of an MRE cracker with no cheese spread. MRE cracker? Wait, who's that? Who's that? 
Uh, Steve1979. Who's the guy who does the MRE reviews? Have you ever have you ever had an MRE cracker? Oh, that Russian guy. Russian hacker. No, okay, so right here in Santa in, Barbara. Well, in Goleta. Yeah. There is a gun shop. Yeah. They sell MREs. Oh. We should I, eat one on stream. You've, you've yeah, never had an MRE? I've never had an MRE. They're fucking delicious. <laughs> like, really, they're so really... Well, as long as you get the right them? ones. So, Ava, do you want to respond to Terminal Well, West? he said they're delicious, so I'm just asking, is that good that that's my personality then? No. No cheese spread. Because there's no cheese. The cracker's the worst part. Oh. Castle 512 donated Yo, real, $20. Andrew, I can't afford a pop champagne, but here's 20 for really? a six-pack of Miller High Life. Oh. Or a few cold 45s. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you to the entire thank Crucible you. crew. Original Dr. Thank you. Gonzo donated $20. Yo, Gonzo, thank you, man. Orange shirt is really laboring to make sure her chest don't fall out of her shirt. <laughs> Would it not have been easier to just actually wear the sweater? But then she can't show them off for the guys, eh? Correct, yes, Borat that's true. donated $20. Yo, Borat, thank Five you. Five out of six people think <laughs> Russian letters. <shape. laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> They're nice. <laughs> the legendary trash panda donated twenty dollars. Cherry, uh -oh. listen. Oh I know that you got a bunch of tattoos. Don't worry, I can still fix you. Oh, you playing hard to get like BBG Natalia. JC thinks he got a shot. B he cap. Girl, let me at them toes. Oh. Yeah. Oh boy, okay, I'll read it. Trish, I'd fly all the way to Santa Barbara from the UK if Brian promises to chain me to a chair. Don't worry, I won't sit on your face even if your nose is bigger than your... <laughs> <laughs> I got a big the nose. underscore I old know. underscore Brian underscore photo Total donated Brian. $20. Oh. What happened to us? I look like you have some things to answer for. I'm looking rough for 69. My advice to young Brian is, I need a lint roll. Where is it, Brian? GMD Jim donated $20. Andrew, I was talking about a 29-year-old Carmela banging a 60-year-old Willie Brown while yeah. he was married. Ooh. Pretty gross. Pretty gross. Yo, Jim, thank you, man. Appreciate it. By the way, by the way. Okay, hang on. Wicked Wally I'll donated $20. Brian, Yo, you Wally. should have sent Desmond home halfway through the show. Wouldn't have been oh the first time a black man walked out and never saw her again. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Even Desmond's back there dying laughing. Okay, okay, hang on. Let me make the best argument. The best, and this is the final argument on the Kamala Harris situation. For all of you, if you were wondering whether or not to vote for Trump or Kamala, my emotional appeal to everybody is that you're going to have to listen to this fucking chick's voice for four years. It's so <laughs> god awful. It's so bad. You don't want to hear it in the background. You don't want to hear skits made of it. Just, just don't. Just, just vote for Trump. You don't want to hear this chick for four years. It's valid. It's valid. It, it, it's if valid. women can vote based on their handsome, can't we vote based on the fact that their voice is annoying? Yeah. I think it's. I think it's fair. I think it's valid. I think it's fair. Amen. Desmond's uh -oh, pants Desmond. donated this is gonna be twenty dollars. Like <laughs> I have no idea what I got myself into. I've been stretched too much that I feel like a three hundred and four after spending several weeks in Pound Town. Pound it is town. rough here. Uh, to the two Cossacks, very nice. <laughs> They're nice. Dario Lundis, nice. Frank Castle, five hundred twelve well, donated twenty dollars. Chair one is on the verge of a nip slip. I've been waiting all night. Can she just make it happen? Subscribe to my and the lady who left had her trick waiting, not her boyfriend. <laughs> Wait, I get it. Yeah, kick Wait, it that one. Who's that directed to? <laughs> the one that was here. Who left? Oh. <laughs> Brutality. Damn. That's... <laughs> Damn. I think Desmond's pants might turn into the new Brian's burrito, I think. We have Joshua Wood, Andrew. By the way, if you guys can, I do appreciate the super chats. On, if you can, can send them through. One? Yeah, sure. Andrew, the false prophet, getting intoxicated while de <laughs> degrading others <laughs> and trying to scam donations out of greed. Judas, <laughs> thy name is Andrew. By the way, 
who felt like they were degraded versus just had a good conversation. Hands? A little. Oh, boy, that must, that must hurt. That must hurt. Must sting, bro. It's got to sting. It's got to sting. We got Barge. Andrew clowned Wes about selling courses and then makes his own grifting course. Oh, well, here, let me uh, let me address the latest conspiratorial allegation. Mom donated $20. Sure. Never knew Stifler's mom had jungle fever. Childhood ruined. <laughs> Took some milf. <laughs> Uh, so let me uh, let me address the latest conspiracy theory. So uh, it's fine to sell a product. No one would ever say that it's not fine to sell a product. Multi-level marketing, on the other hand, that is scam shit. You know what we don't do? Multi-level marketing. I made a course for debating. You can either buy it or don't buy it. I don't do multi-level marketing because that's what fucking scammers do. Speaking of which... Maybe, Austin, you might have to take over for this. Guys, Andrew's course, Debate University, it is available, verbal combat, available at debateuniversity.com if you want to be a master debater like Andrew Wilson over here. <laughs> if you want to masturbate, master, oh my God, <laughs> holy fuck, bro. <laughs> Oh, get dude. the fuck, get uh, the fuck out of I'll, I'll do this. I'll do it. No, I'll yeah. do this. How much is your course? <laughs> uh, <laughs> 69. <laughs> 69? So, so I, I've taken over the captain's helm here um, after being called a chronic master debater by Brian multiple times. I'm not going to put up with this any longer. Go to... DebateUniversity.com. Pick up Verbal Combat. We'd love to see all of you over there. I've debated with some of the best and the brightest in the world, and half of these women are better than them. So let's make sure that you pick up your course today. I appreciate it very much. I have taken over Brian's seat, but but now I'm going to go over this way. Which half? <laughs> Which half of what? Of us. You said half uh, the women here are better. Well, I, I wasn't trying to like pick on you specifically and say that I'm a shitty debater. I, I would never. I didn't say anything of the sort. Oh, no. It was a question. He would only think it. I was just, <laughs> yeah. I was just saying, she's good and. <laughs> That's it. Can we get, I mean, <laughs> Anissa. Jeez. <laughs> Anissa is the go. And then he became judgmental. I have a Christian man. I probably shouldn't. He's the goat. The ghost. <laughs> but yeah, that is available at debateuniversity.com. Look, if you want to become a master debater, if you want to master debate <laughs> all over the place, you you master debate here, you master debate there, you master debate at school, you master debate <laughs> green eggs and ham, Sam I am. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, let me let the TTS come through. Rose session underway. Office donated $20. <laughs> Chair three, you are a lot of woman. When you go hiking in the woods, if you choose the bear, they all have to hide their food. You have a response to this? This story? wasn't that good of a roast. That was pretty. Yeah, it was. It was like all Lisa right. Lisa Marie donated nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents. Have you ever noticed that all the bimbo OnlyFans girls tend to be the <laughs> most <up>. religious? <laughs> it almost looks like the dumber the mind, the more religious. Can you start bringing on smart atheist girls? I'd love to see them. The legendary trash panda donated $20. Chair 8. White top. Tattoo on belly. Girl. Let me tell you. You run your fingers through my fur? Wet. I found some food in the back of the cheesecake factory. You wet yet? Thought so. This is what like... The fuck? Half cum, half insult. $20. Brian, your secret is out. You are a closet fin domin tonight showed that really well. What? I need to rethink my life. What the fuck? Closet findom? Wait. Fin oh, wait. Oh, like because you're fin domin in the chat. Tank Frank donated $20. No. Seat yeah. number eight, what is your DJ name and how can we listen to your bangers? Go through my Instagram. It's Lindsay with an A and K-A-P. Lindsay with an A? My name's Lindsay with an A. Daryl underscore Frank Castle what? 500. Where does the A go? Some people spell their name Lindsay Ryan, like you e -Y, consider having both Andrew and Rachel on oh, at the Lindsay. same time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My wife loves watching with me and she loves Rachel. Where does Thanks to Andrew, now she deposits her paychecks into my bank ACCT. 
Well, I think we're trying, hopefully before the end of the year, to have a uh, Andrew and Rachel uh, tag team episode. There's a couple of problems which come up, which is that uh, I refuse to outsource anybody watching my children other than me or my wife, right? I just refuse to do that. And um, unless it's maybe with one of their elder sisters who work and, you know, live outside the home so you know it's uh it's hard to uh put that together that's a great rule to have uh we have brayden christian can we stop calling them 30 foes and start calling them only fans <laughs> americans <laughs> i per- i mean strumpet strumpet i'm br- i brought back strumpet strumpet's good strumpet is great i think it's better than 304 it's not as it's not as objectionable i think as 304 strumpet Thank you, Braden. And then also, uh, so we're trying though with uh, Andrew and Rachel. We're, we're, maybe it'll happen. We'll see. It'll happen. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. But it's obviously you know. But when you have kids at home, it's, yeah, you got kids. Yeah, you got the kids there. Yeah, and I'm super overprotective. Mm. So fuck off, Brian. Oh, wait. Well, you know, <laughs> keep on trying to set this up, but it's like. <laughs> What the fuck? I can be overprotective. Stop beating me up about it, Brian. Damn. He's not concerned with your boundaries. Yeah. Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> and Two he's pumps. Do an expose on it. <laughs> yeah. I was here for I hours <laughs> with nothing but champagne and and no food and beer <laughs> and beer and beer <laughs> and cigarettes. <laughs> He told me to take my seat aggressively. Time release underscore one donated twenty dollars. Obama labeled black men as sexist for not voting for future President Harris. Contrary to manipulated belief, being a black man in America is not the equal to being a woman in America. Girls wake up already. Yeah. Malkia one donated twenty dollars. Malkia here for a while. Wilson will will debate eventually. Brian ask the girls a gaming question. Also come to Austin FFS. Also, when our boobs too big, ask them over D or D D. Brack Clinton donated twenty dollars. My girlfriend told me that there is no such thing as problems, only opportunities. Uh. I thought that's great. <laughs> well, I have a serious drinking opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that was pretty funny. <laughs> is my face so red? What's that? Is my face is red? No, 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 no. Okay. It's um, it's just the way it looks on the screen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You look, you look fine. It'll show up fine in camera. But okay, so maybe going around as we wait for the super chats to come in. Um. <laughs> Sorry. What? No, I was just laughing. What? <laughs> Wait, what? And lay it. I'm t- I'm I haven't laughing. kicked a single woman off this panel tonight. What if I donated twenty dollars? Brian decompresses after the show by binging Yanni. What the fuck is Yanni? Do you know what Yanni? You you know what Yanni is. <laughs> you know what every hard drug is that there is. I actually don't, and I'm assuming Yanni is some um, like anime Laurel. bullshit you guys were talking about. No, earlier. it's Laurel. That's the only thing I can think it's of. what? Lo- you remember the Laurel Yanni Into thing? The mic. Remember the Laurel Yanni thing? Oh, yeah. It's Laurel. Where you hear the one or the yeah, other? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. You let us down, Ryan. Did I? What did I do? You left, and I couldn't. Binging Yanny? I, I, couldn't, I couldn't keep the, sh- the show going on my shoulders, bro. Oh, man. Hey, you know, it's, it's a hard job. <laughs> it's you were a going hard job. to ask a question. You were, go- you were going to. Andrew yeah, was I going. was going to ask a question, but then I saw there was a slew of super chats which were coming in. The legendary Trash Panda donated $20. Share it. The rumors of me having rabies and tunneling under synagogues are total BS. <laughs> Don't listen to Andrew. He's just trying to move in on us. Your face is red because you thinking on my fur girl. You're King a fucking Blackout jerk, donated bro. Donated $20. You're a jerk. Dollars. Damn Desmond, you're safe from child support for 18 years. <laughs> Poor you. I bet she only goes for guys as dark as the hip in her mouth. <laughs> Absolutely, and he's right. Uh, I got a Haitian baby daddy. Black as shit. What? <laughs> Desmond, <laughs> stop throwing up. Stop Is it, Desmond. Really gonna have the stop it, Desmond. Desmond. Keep your keep it deck. 
Stop. Dude. How are you going to keep doing the show? He's throwing up so loudly back there. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. That's fucking Dale disgusting. Frank Castle, 512 oh. donated Frank Castle, $20. Frank Castle, thank you, man. Appreciate hey, it. Hey, April, out of the four baby daddies, how many actually pay support? Is that why Half. you chose to be a strumpet? You said two of them? Full face. Two? Okay, okay. two of the four. Two. Roth okay. underscore PSA donated $20. Lots of empty cups on the table, but full of bottles. We you're all committing party foul hang on, number hang on, hang on. sixty-nine. Let me respond. Eyebrows matter. The will is strong, and I will continue until this is done. Okay, the will is strong. It's not my fault that everybody else at the table isn't Irish, which is the superior ethnicity. It's not my fault that he's French. And there's a bunch of Russians. <laughs> you know, it's not my fault. A stereotype, right? hey, I'm doing the best. I'm doing the best, I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing the best Russians I can. Russians drink right? a lot, though, right? Yeah, well, yeah vodka. <laughs> they do vodka, champagne. That's like... Yeah, you guys should each be taking a bottle. Yeah, you would think. Unreal. Yeah. I'm doing the best. I, 